rice. Yeah? Is there enough water? It's very shallow. I mean, we can always go deeper. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is beginning then. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Anarcho Agony Arms. Wait, I need to mic up. Miking up edition. <laughs> As you can see, this is a slightly different setup to our normal videos. I'm What's the that. difference, you wonder? It's outside! <laughs> well, we've done ones outside already. Oh, yeah, live ones, all right. I lied, the difference is that we're wearing bikinis. <laughs> because <laughs> um, it's summer, and despite London's attempt to make it as unsummery as possible, we are making the most of it. Yes, for sure. Um, yeah, so what, we've decided no further quotes. No, no sorry, no further, no, <laughs> no, no more uh, water. No, I think it's fine because I'm like sweating. Oh, By yeah. the way, we're clever. We put in like a couple of kettles of hot water. See, it's a jacuzzi. Not just pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gosh. All right. So, for those of you who've seen our show before, hello again. And for those of you who are new, hello. Hi, this is Rowan. I'm Mariam. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe. Watch our previous shows. Uh, the way that this works is basically we get um, there's a Curious Cat account you can find the link to it uh, at the bottom of this video um, or any other and people have anonymously uh, they, they've been sending us questions to do with love, relationships, alienation, sex, uh, all of that stuff and we're trying to uh, answer them we're not experts, we're just two gals with plenty of opinions uh, but thus far the response has been really wonderful and yeah, you guys and the people that are sending us questions, people that are viewing this, are the ones that are making this project, and we are eternally grateful. All right, well, shall we begin? Yes, yes. Um, on a deeply appropriate note for um, for oh, the fact that we're yes. in a swimming pool, the first question is, the climate crisis is ruining my sex life. I don't want to date. I refuse to bring a child into a world without a future. I never feel sexy. The dread of our race's inaction has defeated my libido. That is wonderful. I mean, I mean it's fucked up. Yeah. But, but like, incredible question. Same. So yeah, I, I really want to hear this, the, more about this from you, because I know you definitely, uh, you know, we were, I'm really sorry that we're taking, taking a while to answer your question. Yeah. If it was but like basically the last one on our previous show, we just decided to go for uh, this time. But um, to hell, I think we can make this distinction. I don't necessarily see myself as a future, Parent, mm. I think if it's okay, if I think it's okay for you to come. Yeah, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't have kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. I also recognize that I am subjecting them to a world far more terrible than ours. But I also, you know, when I'm like 85, kind of want someone to look after me. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> my, I guess, my hope and uh, utopia is that we'll have a bunch of friends with, I don't know. Maybe a couple of kids, but not everyone has to have kids. So well, we need some young people to like carry us around when the tidal waves are coming. Well, we'll have robots play that or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So, yeah. So, but has that is that has there been something uh, that you've experienced, like you felt that you can't necessarily, uh, that you don't see the future in parenting because of those issues? Well, because that's what's curious to me. Is the question is, or the, the statement is, the climate crisis is ruining my sex life, and then there's the thing that you don't want to have kids. So I'm wondering, like. Is it ruining your sex life and the fact that everyone you're dating wants to have kids and it's a hard line no for you? Because, I, I mean, we can have sex in the apocalypse, you know, like, we can have sex as we're drowning in the tidal waves. You can have sex while you're covered in, I don't know, well, bad happens, malaria, like... <laughs> my, my point is, like, you, you seem to be conflating sex with the long-term dating process that ends in children, and I'm wondering whether that's necess necessary? Yeah, so again, as always, and I'm sorry for repeating ourselves too much, it seems like there are just like some underlying, uh, you know, kind of confidence issues that perhaps you're then, I don't know, projected it on this particular uh, issue. I mean, really, especially in the mass depression that we're all living, a lot of the time, uh, the thing that relieves us from it, and that is not an anti capitalist project in any shape or form, but it is, uh, you know, the butterflies and the tummy that you get after after hooking up with someone that you really, really fancy and that sort of stuff. So the fact that you're denying that to yourself is, is a bit of a shame because it is one of those like undeniably like kind of like cross, cross gender, cross race, uh, internationally um, sort of international feeling that anyone can get. And well, yes. the thing is you don't want to have kids, but you're quite happy with your sex life. Like. Uh, yes, up and down and this <laughs> Side to side. Yes, well actually, talking about kids and this is a thought that only came to me maybe two days ago i think well 
yeah, first of all, I just, I think materially, if I had like, I don't know, a house in Islington, you know, and a part-time job, perhaps, perhaps, but even, but Islington is a very nice knows. area of London for oh, yeah. our international audience. Apologies, yes. <laughs> uh, but even beyond that, I was like, what is it? What is it that I just can't deal with? You know, what? I just don't. And you know what I realized? It's like, I don't want to be a mother. I want to be a father. Mm. You know I what I mean? I think this all the time, yeah. I don't want to be the one folding clothes, the one that, that nags them, the one that tells them what not to do. Exactly. I want to be the one climbing a tree with them, teaching them how to surf. Mate, like, like okay, and this is purely stereotypical mm, uh, matters. Like, we can be, I understand there are some awesome dads out of that. We respect you, all of that. Though I think there it is definitely uh, a minority. I don't know, like, I have this, like, all dads are bastards thing, but I don't know. They just don't agree with me. <laughs> so, but, yeah, like, I don't want to uh, change my body in any shape or form. Like, I'm, although I have insecurities, I'm quite happy with it as it is so i don't want to go through all of that stuff and then like all the breastfeeding etc don't want to go through that and then i would be more than happy to just go to my job do whatever i already know and and can come back home and then i still already get love and then the other person is doing kind of all the work and they are then it's their fault if the kid is fucked up sort of thing a little bit well obviously sometimes that's the but the thing like you often end up with is that the, the the partner that does go to the work and do the job thing ends up resenting the one staying at home because they don't recognise that raising a child is labour and they end up thinking that oh you just get to sit around with a baby all day blah 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 while but, I'm off earning a living yeah yeah but then the person that does you know earn a living they can maybe take out a kid for a Saturday and they're like heroes if you see like a dad outside with a with a child everyone's like mm, so would you like dad. to be a divorced parent that only has your kid on weekends. I will, I don't, maybe I would just like to meet someone that is already a, like a teenager or probably adopt or whatever it is. But like, I just really don't want to go through the whole body thing, like at all. What about adoption then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, there's too many I don't think anyone's going to give me a child because of my material conditions. But would you but like them, see like. that as like a political project to adopt since there's like overpopulation and lots of kids that are not given the right circumstances? I, I would be very wary of calling it a political project because like it is... I, I would never pass judgment on anyone that gives birth no, to children. No, the reason why I'm framing it that way is like you have an analysis around like raising kids that detracts people from like from engaging in active politics. When they have kids, they tend to like recluse. Oh, yeah, Whereas, I do have yeah. that opinion. <laughs> no, which is fine. But then I'm wondering like if you are seeing part of the political project as adoption as not just a good thing to do with a mother and blah blah blah, but also a thing to do that is like. No, I think it would be more selfish for me, you know, the fact that, yeah, I don't want to ruin my body, so, like, hence I don't have to do that then. Like, I don't, I, I, I don't think I would, I would see it as, like, me saving someone or anything like that. I think mm. they would be saving me as much as I would save them, you know? Um, yeah. If I were to arrive to the point of wanting to do that. Sorry, this, again, we veered off of your question, but, okay, so... Maybe... It's interesting because I don't know what gender the questioner is. That's And true. yet, because they said that they didn't want to have kids, I assumed they were male. Same! Which is, like... Oh, my God, same! Yeah, which is actually... really fucked up, Yeah, actually. also because you don't want to have kids and you're a woman, so it's like, why did I jump to that conclusion? I totally... Did. Well, you know what, to be fair, a lot of the time that we get questions, they are... They do come from mm. dudes, like, that's why maybe that was a natural assumption. But, yeah, I totally had that, too, because the stereotype is of a dude not wanting Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, oh, okay. Another thing that's uh, it's kind of a bit sad that listen. I think I have uh, heard this in some like Financial Times podcast or whatever it was. And I'm not gonna give justice to this like Greek proverb or such. But there's this. There was this saying back in like ancient Greece, where like so, someone has been noted of saying it's like, you know, the world is coming to an end. They are paying more to wrestlers than to the teachers. You know. That was in ancient Greece already. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and their they their thinking was like, that's it. You know, like we're past any point of redemption. Well, maybe maybe we did peak in ancient Greece. So what I'm saying is that, like, although there are many many reasons to be depressed, for sure, uh, I would um, I would just um, really think about the fact that we do usually find our ways to save us you know think about our parents generation there was a cold war they thought they were going to be nuked you know the east and the west all the time mm. and then they survived not to say that now is a better time in, in many other ways but you know like there it's not all just despair especially for us in the west like maybe it's actually really <laughs> fucked up for people to go for but for us in the west like there's probably going to be a way that we'll find manage to like i don't know automate everything around us probably at a cost of the global south and that but like it's yeah. But also, like, people do tend to, like, reproduce more in times of crisis. Like, think of, like, the boomer generation. They were all during war and post-war born, and that's the biggest generation of people ever born in, like, the Western world. So, like, the relationship between crisis and having children is not clear. The ethical question about whether you should have children in crisis is harder. Like, oh, as in, like, you're, you're, you're giving birth to children that are likely to... Yeah, if you give birth to a child during the Cold War and you know that that kid could be lived to five and then die in a nuclear explosion, it's kind yeah. of an interesting choice to have made, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, for 
pressure and yet perhaps you're giving birth to like Greta Thunberg, you know right. what I mean? And also I really hate like the logical conclusion of this argument is the really dodgy one which is like you shouldn't have kids if you're not financially secure, you shouldn't have kids if you don't live in a stable place, like yeah. fuck that like eugenics bullshit as yes, well. Yes, absolutely, like, yeah then you, we will only have people that are not depressed about these issues that are more than happy to, I don't know, like reproduce their their dodgy politics yeah, and that's you just have like the upper class capitalist we're the only ones like allowed to have kids which is yeah like if the elon musks who get to go off in their spaceship and live on mars are the only ones having kids that's a fucking terrifying society yeah so perhaps you know, yeah i i do hope that uh it seems like you already have a lot of empathy and thinking towards the future as is so i really trust you to be an incredible parent if you want to but also i really don't know where you come from perhaps you are in a society like your surroundings are full of people that everyone is having a child for instance my relatives in in Bashkortostan and Tatarstan you know there I'm, I'm 28 I'm without kids I'm already like a hopeless a hopeless yeah, you're case. A oh absolutely like it, it's 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 gone so they really they judge me massively for not having children and I imagine if perhaps you're in a similar environment you do think like that's it I'm fucked and and in which case have. the dating, the assumption that by dating someone you end up having kids is stronger than I think it is in our society where you date but you don't expect that to happen unless like blah blah blah, yeah. four years down the line, this, 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 like, yeah. if not, like I don't see a problem with dating and not wanting to have kids and I don't think it's that much, but it also depends on your age as well, like, I know that like mid and late in your 30s a lot of people only want to date if they see the prospect of kids with that person, so that makes it harder, but I do think there are people that don't want to have kids and you will be able to find them and have like a great sex life, a great relationship without that being a part of it. Like, yeah. Yeah, so, um, I mean, okay. Should we go, go and have a look at their particular words and that that we need to... Oh, yeah, let me yeah. read it. Just be really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, you know, crisis can happen where, whenever, you know? Crisis used to happen all the time and it's just the one that we're going through right now Oh, this, this bit, I never feel sexy, the dread of our race in action has defeated my libido. So you yeah. literally don't want to have sex because of the climate, not just because of the kids thing. Now, so you see, I, I feel difficult to believe that in a sense of like, uh, that one is so devoted and one's politics are so pure that that, that completely overtakes Maybe that's a Freud in me, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I can't necessarily believe that, like, the lack of selfishness in a sense, you know, because, uh, you know, a, a, a joy of, of, of a consensual, romantic or intimate relationship is, 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 is one that is, is our only hope a lot of the time. You know? And also, like, maybe this is not like, to say that we are not very visible of asexual people. Right? Yeah. But like this is maybe my like privilege as a person who's not living in like hyper crisis scenario right now. I mean, in a, like meta sense, I am. But like, there to me is something like it's kind of the narrative that we often have of like that feeling when it's us against the world, which is a very like powerful like sexual and romantic drive. Yeah. And like when it's literally the world yeah. imploding yeah. and it's me and you. I mean, that's in every fucking apocalyptic romantic movie ever is like the two people and the world exploding and. And I find, weirdly, yeah, I think it's probably just my privilege and like fetishization of talking, but I find that a very sexy and appealing narrative. For real, yeah. And then, like, I imagine, again, because we don't really know your circumstance, perhaps you're literally writing from like a war zone, <laughs> a war zone or somewhere where like the, you, you know, the, the, an island that is disappearing. Yeah. And like, yeah, you just, you can basically change this all around you. And of course, you'll just be depressed. And I mean, if we're going down, let's go down hand in hand. But then again, yeah, that's, that's so crime thinking. I know, sure. it is. It's super <laughs> crime thinking. And it's super, yeah, over romanticized. But I guess I'd rather not, be, maybe it's just being selfish, I'd rather not be alone when everything's going to shit. I would rather be with someone. Yeah, and also, I mean, I would like to think that you can find, you can engage in activism that will perhaps bit by bit, you will feel that you're part of a change. And if you can meet someone in that environment, you know, chances are if you'll meet someone that feels very similar to you, that will be a big turn on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even that like nihilism, sometimes if, if you meet between two people and like both of them go like, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. All right, let's kiss now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds dumb, but you know, like, I mean, perhaps finding kind of other people that, that do like do feel very similar i mean i have the same hopelessness and despair and yeah. even if you talk about that and like connect about that that's still a really fucking strong connection yeah 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 for sure and it's just like spaces for um i think there are still 
I think that is the only thing a lot of the time that keeps me going is like a feel of and sense of pride that I know I am changing things and, and like I know my existence is of utility yeah, to the you're, world. You're net good. Right? Yeah, I'm a net good. <laughs> I like to think. Um, and that's and that pride uh, then then gives confidence, you know, and gives and, and it gives a certain sort of like a a wish to share it. I wish to share my body <laughs> <laughs> Um yeah, so I wonder if perhaps there's an insecurity that you're not doing enough for it, which is kind of sounds really terrible. But um, but then again, what are you meant to do? Well, you separate yourself into like middle of nowhere and then and then just see the world burn. But I am, I don't know, I don't think the... It's going to be a slow thing. It's not like this big movie apocalypse scenario yeah. that you are thinking of. Yeah, and as long as... Like everyone's saying like 2050, 2050, it's not like the tsunami is going to happen in 2050 and that's the human race wiped out. Well, okay, but why is this happening, right? Because there's the the capitalist class is 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 in control right now, right? So if we spread anti-capitalist propaganda effectively enough, enough of us, if you do around your circles, if they do it around your their circles, and I'm not trying to do this whole like individual action thing because a lot of the time it's not working but you know like but you can change minds on an individual level and then those people go off and do it too that is like a valid thing basically systems don't exist people do yeah. right so let's just get on with attempting to change that and yeah it's hopelessness where well, you think we don't get into burnout situations all the time now like even our show is a is, is like a, is, is a is a sign of disparity that there is what we're doing with the show is like it's not definitely not giving us any credit, and 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 uh, no, not materially, not socially, and uh, because there is a crisis of of you know of of, of I Couple suppose of cis yeah. mental health yeah, yeah like mask whatever masculinity etc you know so so we're Don't always on the defensive as well so whatever would be your way to perhaps gain self confidence from um, changing your like we're not gonna, yeah, we're not gonna say that you and you alone can stop the climate crisis, but you can get involved in projects that feel meaningful and do, like, yeah, like a net good yeah. on a on a small scale, and that's super. I don't know. As long as it's not extension. <laughs> Did you see that they now have like XR police Facebook group and XR landlords Facebook group? I thought that I thought the landlord one was a troll. No. The one I that was like talking so. about tenants and talking about how like. Um, Oh, what was it? It was like how landlords are actually the ones who care most about the environment because they actually have like ownership of the land, whereas tenants don't care about the environment because oh, exactly. they're just renting a space. Yeah, yeah, I no. thought that was a troll. Mate, post. like these people have brand guidelines. These people have PR agencies. They could get a website, like or no website, Facebook group shut down because it's using their brand. Like they're not doing that. I have a bad feeling it might just be them. Anyways, we're now very involved. Oh, extremely important work some of it that it does yeah i actually for have sure. mixed on xr because like xr local like pens has an xr group near the school at galawan fine and i'm like you know fine. what if they've galvanized like climate activism in the far southwest they are not often to get arrested on mass it's like sure. the london centric met fetishizing xr yes. branch that we have an issue yes. with yes. Agreed. because it don't deliberately get people arrested you irresponsible scum absolutely yes yes that's look uh i think <laughs> What I want to uh, do, and I'm really sorry, this is not usual for the not live shows, but because this is a different setup for us, I'm also a bit um, a hand film outside whenever there was not someone already looking at how it's going and that sort of stuff. We are just gonna pause really quickly, and you're gonna see the whole show after the cuts. I'm really sorry. I just want to check how. Well, it I also think you should put a little bit more water in the pool. Fabulous. So, okay, so sorry. There is gonna be a cut, but usually we're very much aware that we don't want to do cuts, and we, in the live shows, and we're we never gonna do. We're never going to cut because we've said something wrong or yeah. anything like that. We cut for purely technical reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to change the no. segment or anything like that, but there will be a cut between questions, basically. Yeah. And I think that's that thing. Okay, right. so back in five. Mm. Okay, we're back. We had a brief break. Hello. Hello, Hello Mike's Mike's uh, yeah. in a better space now because they were there the before. The so sorry. Out. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. Anyways, but we're good. Back and back to it. Right, so second question. Again, thank you so much. Hey, you're both doing incredible work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm a 22 year old male. I came out to my friends and family about being bisexual about one year ago. Since then, however, I still feel very isolated. My friends, etc., are fantastic, but no one close to me is LGBT, and I haven't got the confidence to go to LGBT places on my own, meaning that I still kind of feel like I'm not experiencing the side of myself. I know that it would be good to attend LGBT events, etc., but I can't bring myself to go on my own. I also still, still feel a little bit scared of gay sex, which I've never been involved in as well, and I don't want to be seen, even though I'm out. I'm just a bit of a mess, really, and I, any help would be really appreciated. Thanks. 
So thank you so much. Just before we get onto your bit, I just have a few uh, relevant thoughts that I came up with actually while you were reading that out. Is that, okay, so today in Pride, in London, it's Pride, right? Which is amazing and it's really cool. And before I moved to London, I was living in Vienna and I was part of a very, very strong queer community and I did all the queer events. I actually performed stand-up comedy at two Vienna Prides in a row. And I moved back to London, I've got great friends here and some of them are LGBTQ and I'm part of like a wonderful scene. But the people I am friends with who are queer don't really want to do these events and I didn't want to go alone. So here I am doing this with my am as like a very valid and important project instead of being at Pride. Because, yeah, it is, it is hard being part of like communal things, especially ones that you're expected to be part of a group when you're by yourself. And like, I think of myself as a reasonably confident person and yet I didn't, I didn't want to do that and I've been, yeah, out as queer for like a few years now so I I totally feel you basically on that. Thank you so much yeah thank you so much for touching on this you know it's always very very tricky subjects and, and even admitting that like even to this day one can feel lonely in these sort of occasions that's like that's huge. So, yeah. yeah and it's and it's really hard because like although the queer community is very welcoming it's also quite like like for example like I wouldn't feel comfortable taking my boyfriend to these events so like, although there are several queer parties tonight, I don't want to be seen as that straight couple appropriating up spaces. Because although like, you know, you're allowed Which to be happens. bisexual, Which yeah, happens bisexual well. is a real thing, and the fear, the idea that people assume that you're straight because you're in these spaces is not cool. And also, no, straight, straight I mean, the people, straight couples appropriating yeah, events. And straight is also people appropriating <laughs> events is also a thing. Exactly, both things are things, yeah. and I don't want to be part of that, or I don't want to be seen to be part of that, even though I am in fact queer. So there's a lot of like, yeah, even though I'm fortunate enough to have this like great group around me, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing Pride events with them, which is a really sad thing, like really. You guys should meet up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we can go to Pride together. <laughs> and meet up one else. So uh, it seems to me like there are two parts for this particular question. Yes. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and, uh, well, we're gonna try and cover them all, but like, because um, I know I have bad memories, so I kind of need to kind of write things down and that before. So I kind of, I think I already uh, looked before the question and I remember. Uh, so one is uh, one is the the, the sort of the, the more the more the more sexual part, and the other one is like how do I go about socializing yeah, the more community in the community? Yeah. So my one idea was with the with the latter one, well, the first one in the actual question, former. Yeah, former. Well, I guess I don't know. So latter in my the way because I put them the other way around. Ah, oh, anyway, so sorry, sorry. Former in the question, latter yeah, in your yeah, left side. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, um, it's 2019, though it's really, really like LGBTQ plus people are still having to go through an incredible amount of marginalization and violence is on the rise. And gosh, I cannot even begin. And yeah, it's really, really dark out there. And yet, on the live in the liberal sense, uh, there is like more acceptance than that, and like there are more social events that are not necessarily. I would say even five years ago, it would have been like. That's it, you know, just 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 the, the, the queer socializing or like you know, the, the gay people LGBTQ plus people socializing. But now there is like uh you know, gay LGBTQ plus some sort of activity. What I'm trying to say, for instance, again, I'm putting in my like gaming perspective. So in London there are London gamers, which is G A Y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're basically a bunch of LGBTQ plus um, nerds, people into video games, and they meet up at Loading Bar, I think, every month, you know? And I think you would find a lot of other activities and professions and uh, just communities that have that particular angle to them. But is he, is he somewhere rural where access well, to yeah, physical perhaps. spaces might be harder? I mean, my, my go to is always online spaces, right? Yeah. Like, there's so many good Facebook but even groups. That, and even stuff. for that. So, like, you can be like, you know, because I don't think that's the only thing that defines you, right? You probably have just like your own activity, something that you're into, you know, some, I mean, your profession, whatever it is. And of course, there will be LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus people in that community. And so you don't have to necessarily define yourself just as queer, you know, you can totally be like, I am myself, and, well, and I have my hobby, hobbies, and I wonder if you could find a community within that. My, okay, I, I totally agree with that, but my thing, which comes from my own insecurities and stuff, and like with dating women, is that there is no way I would ever hit on a woman in a non-queer specific environment. Like, so even if we met through our mutual love of Jenga, I would not, like, and I didn't know if she was queer or not, but I really fancied her. There is no way I but would... But the queers like, of Jenga, though. If there was the queers of Jenga, yeah. that specific one, but, yeah. like, I don't know. I feel like... Th Which also 
also you shouldn't just <laughs> <laughs> Well, you also shouldn't just go somewhere just to hit on people ever in general. No, but I, my I point think it's is more like, of a support thing. I don't think you have to go and like hook up with people. It's more like you talk about you know your everyday or like your experiences with your parents and that sort of stuff. Or yeah. like your friends. I mean, yeah, I guess it depends what access do you have. Do you have these physical spaces and groups, like, and also like something I know from one of my friends who's gay is that like gay men groups are often quite like insular and there's not like there's often not much overlap between like the gay men scene and like bisexuality queer lesbians the, the broader lgbtq stuff in general and i know he in particular finds that quite um stifling that he is either in the gay scene with his gay men friends or he's like in the the real world which but is that's straight. a matter of time right that's just like being defensive completely understandably right i don't know i think i mean i, just I think don't the, think the gay male subculture like is like quite a specifically gay male one in many ways well actually that's that's the arriving to the second point in terms of like uh the the, the more sexual side of things um and that's something uh, just wow did i seriously just do that i am um, am i drunk am i that drunk i'm not that drunk but there we go and and that's the culture of grinder and actually some um, some uh books already written about this, some incredible articles and that, and um, the idea that actually it began like fairly innocently and actually then, um, you know, rejection turns into a loop and then and then there has been like a certain loss of, of empathy and um, that right now things are quite raw in that, you know, as in like a, there, is, there is a certain lack of, 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 of I suppose, and this is purely statistically speaking, we're not just making, you know, like a... I mean, I have lots of anecdotal to join your statistical. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this just, yeah, yeah. this paper, so whatever, it's just like that there seems to be a... People don't necessarily go to, to grinder for relationships, although people have them. And so I was listening to this, like, uh, 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 BBC podcast where they were um, saying... Um, and again, you know, we're not we're not scientists, we just say our anecdotal uh, sort of evidence because that's just us and our experience and I'm, I'm hoping to think that's okay um, where they, they weren't going there and they were they were saying I was in the early days and I was lucky enough to just meet someone who literally we would just like meet every Thursday and read books together and like but we're not in a relationship and and um, we're still like six years later they're still an incredible friend of mine you know but they were much older and that sort of stuff but they were like now I, now I look into it and it's a completely different world you know well so, so what, what I'm trying to say, but the last yeah. thing, and I really want to, really want to hear it. I have so many thoughts. Yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that, that, like, I don't want you to think, like, oh, hey, fuck, I'm, you know, I don't know, I'm bio, I'm gay, you know, and like, I want to meet people. Hence, I look into onto grinder. Oh shit, this is really dark. Hence, uh, I'm never gonna try this again. So, um, I have someone who's very close to me who has like been very involved in grinder over the last few years, and I don't think you would mind me talking anonymously about this, but. Um, there are, he has had both, basically, because the thing about Grindr, unlike Tinder and other dating apps, is that you don't have to match in order to be start talking to someone. And you will get unsolicited dick pics. Like, oh, they say within the like 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah. And like, you will have, you probably, account? if you're like in an urban area, you will have 50 people messaging you. And it can be very, very overwhelming and an exhausting it's process. scary. And scary, and all of the things, but it matches by distance, which is like, and in like meters and stuff. Mm. But on the other hand, the same friend has continually, and he uses it to this day, has made incredible friends, has moved to a new city and found someone to practice a foreign language with, someone who gave him their fan heater because they were leaving the city he was in and it was 40 degrees as a present, who has let him sleep on their couch while he's looking for a house where he lives. Like, so it's n like, yes, the grinder culture has shifted towards this um, much more sexualized, immediate, immediate, dick, 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 dick attitude, but that is really not all you find there. And you can find genuinely interesting people and make connections and make friends. Like he's made more friends of grinder than lovers in the That's long run he, but also in general people say like i i make more friends of grinder than i do of, of any other yeah kind of game communities or whatever like. this is the thing because like unlike tinder tinder is just about dating grinder is about no being... tinder should be about okay. fucking but, but some annoying people straight people have ruined but my, point, my, my point is grinder is about being gay yeah, so and that's what I mean. It's not just about so finding stuff like it's it was designed as a sex app and you will get the dick pics, but it's also like genuinely used by a lot a lot of people. Just like I'm in this city and I'm gay, 
who do I meet? And you'd be surprised, even in rural areas, if that's where you are, like, how many people you might stumble across through Grindr. So I would say it's worth investigating, but steal yourself against the barrage of potential exhausting... Totally. So don't get sta- scared by the, by the bad bits, but perhaps that's something worth investigating. And yet, um, you don't completely write off the entire platform because mm. there will be a lot of unsolicited yeah. dick pics and, and weirdness. But also don't also don't don't do it if you don't want to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If it, like if that's crossing a line for you and that's like because it is like it's that is a line that should not be crossed. Yeah. Unsolicited dick pics are completely out of order. So we're not saying like just put up with it, but we're saying like if you feel like you can accept that side of the platform which does exist, then you could discover this whole other side of the platform and then quickly. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing I would say, like in terms of the like. Uh, like not sure about gay sex stuff is like obviously porn but also... we discussed this also in another episode so sorry yes. to do this so we're kind of we're either repeating ourselves or also uh, you should have a look at a couple of our episodes from like i think two episodes ago or something yeah no, it's from one of our um live shows so it'll be one of the outside videos but we cover a similar situation about someone who is lgbt in a rural area and is like having anxiety about yeah. being uh, gay and how to be gay and we do talk about this but yeah like if you in a porn is too much for you, like movies with like gay plot lines, see how you feel about them, see how like you know like call me by your name, obviously, like and also erotica. Like I know that's a bit uncool nowadays, but like seriously erotica. What happened to good old I mean, erotica? I discovered my queerness through reading Harry Potter gay fan fiction, wow. and I've never looked back. Like erotica. Yeah. So there is also like if like gay porn is maybe like a bit too uh, immediate for you, like reading some like sexy romance story, maybe with your favorite. TV characters in it or whatever like there are other ways of like seeing how you feel sexually like I like oh does this turn me on does that turn me on like yeah absolutely and I know what you're saying that like okay so you say you know your friends are great but none of them are like LGBT LG, Jesus. I, I just say queer uh, I, so but um, some LGBT this is really embarrassing. This is really embarrassing. I've been like, I'm not like some shitty BBC presenter that can't actually pronounce this. It. Like, I have been legitimately <laughs> using this this acronym for like over decades. So this is really embarrassing. I'm not that annoying, straight girl. And I'm. I also cover my not that straightness. Yes. Other another bits of the yeah. not acronyms, but this one. <laughs> but um, LGBTQ plus. I know it's also my English, but it's also the beer problem. Um, oh. Uh, that some people don't like the word queer. Oh yeah, yeah. No, 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 it was about the friends, as in like, hey, oh. so yeah, perhaps they are not of that community, but like, I think something to be said about like being like, hey, pay straight, pay some of your straight dividends, like accompany me to this event. Yes, you and know also what I mean? like, like, if, you if got, you're gonna be a good ally, yeah. And if you have a crush on someone who is like a man, being able to talk about that with your friends, and like, because like I tell Marianne if I have a crush on a woman, like she's not gonna see me and relate, but like she'll be like, oh my god, it's a crush, let's talk about this, like. <laughs> Not only do our um, do our a taste for men differ, our taste for women differ. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> everything. <laughs> if nothing in common. So we're like, yeah, I'll be supportive of you, and yeah, I'll judge you on the inside. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, why that absolutely. Person. I mean, I do the same. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm glad you're happy, but really. <laughs> but that's great because we're never into the same people. So no, so it, it actually, that's why we're. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so I don't know, like uh, something to be said about them actually showing some support yeah, and they up. choose actively not to and also like if someone is going to like a gay bar with someone as as a, like a straight friend i do not by the way think that's not acceptable like when i was saying earlier about like a, a oh, straight yeah, people yeah, going yeah. to spaces i mean if a straight couple is making out in a very straight way in a queer space that's not cool if like a straight person wants to go to somewhere because their queer friend wants that support that's being a good ally like yeah. you know they're not going to go to a gay bar and be straight that would be you know what i mean yeah yeah <laughs> but also like don't fall in don't fall for the entirety of like what we have also called out a lot of the time the sort of like the, 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 the queer aesthetic that can be a bit overwhelming like be by however you want to be by yeah like, don't feel like you have to wear a rainbow t-shirt now if you don't no, want to no 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 be yourself you know like again again yeah just hopefully we can bit by bit acknowledge that everyone, you know, that there are different ways of being by. Like someone I know that is like, I don't know, just to be like metal dude, you know, just usually like wears metal metal t-shirts, like piercings, all of the stuffs, you know, like bias fuck. But like, 
the sort of the elitist London queer scene we've never seen. No, 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 no. Oh, and because it's like really mask, like kind yeah. of like built up as well. Couldn't possibly. No, of course, of course. And yeah. so don't fall for that shit because like if you do fall, like you will do it for a couple of yeah. years, you will lose identity, they will break you eventually, and you have a nervous breakdown. Yeah. Not that I'm talking about anything now, anyone that I would know. No, but like I've also had that like anxiety, like where you know, as like a kind of like femme appearing woman, like I am often like red and straight because I don't have shaved sides and a nose ring and anywhere part. Like, and if you want to do those things, that's great, and that's a totally yeah, valid yeah, entry. Sure, but sure, if you sure, don't sure. want to, fucking don't. Like, yeah. Your sexuality is not defined by your outfit, which sounds like an absurd thing to have to say, but yeah. like... And I just want to last note, there are a bunch of really cool Facebook groups um, that are very, uh, like, politically good kind of queer-centric and not just, like, gay man gay. A few I could think of is... Um, my bisexuality just took a hard straight turn. Also, my bisexuality just took a hard gay turn. Are both great groups. We can groups. totally put that on yeah. show notes as well. And um, I'm going to fling these, those gatekeepers into the sun. It's a great group all whoa, about... Whoa, whoa. I want to fling those gatekeepers into the sun. It's about people that gatekeep who gets to be ah, in events. Like, yeah, oh, ah. asexual people aren't part of the pride acronym. Uh, aren't part of the acronym. Like, fuck off. Or like, you know, bisexual people should not be acting so straight. Fuck off. It's like a very good, like, supportive group of That's expressing great. it however you want. So there are a bunch of really good Facebook groups. We will put them in the show notes nice on this one. video. Yeah. Along with the other video we do on a similar topic. We also linked to, but we'll remember. So, yeah, do check out the other video we do on a similar issue. It's also legend, man. Like you came mm. out, well done, well done. Mm. I know it's it's gonna be difficult as fuck, like, and yet, yeah. you know, like I I don't know. Again, coming from Eastern Europe, where people are still like, well, even here as well, like people still get lynched over this and mm. that sort of stuff, and it's just well, not lynch. Lynch is, is a very specific word. I don't, I didn't mean to use it, but like, it hurts yeah. in very very severe ways. Um, that's you know more people are coming out and also looking at like different cultures like i don't know it's all, it's all you know i saw like our, i'm not gonna say where we live but our, our locality um outside the town hall there was a thing saying uh our locality is going to pride and our locality has an lgbtq youth group and like want to and this is like really like a really small quite um not hip part of london and there are stuff going on here as well, which are like specific to this area, which is, I thought was super cool. Yeah. And one last note I want to say on the like being scared of the sex thing. The first time I slept with a woman, I sucked. I was super drunk. I didn't know what I was doing. Luckily, she was like um, straight, so she had never slept with a woman before either, so she didn't know that I was terrible. But like, you will get better. And if, and if you find a partner who is like patient enough to teach you, which I managed to find afterwards, you will get better quickly and get the rewards of seeing them come, which is awesome. Like, so yeah. Everyone starts somewhere. I have only been sleeping with uh, women for three years. So I started when I was, yeah, 22. So you're not slow, you're not behind, like... Happy coming, happy coming out. Yeah, happy pride, <laughs> yeah, happy good pride. luck. Let us know how it goes. Yes, please. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Yay. Just gonna check the audio and we'll, we'll pull up the yeah. next question. I am so yeah, gonna drop my phone in the... Oh, I'm getting cold again, this is oh, bullshit. Uh, well, okay, we'll one do one more question and then we'll, and then we'll do a another. heating up break. Heat up, but Oh, maybe one of us will entertain you in the meantime because we don't like doing those cuts because well, it's we can, can leave it on for a little bit, like the tap. It's not touching the bad bit yet. We have a, we have a crack in our pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Okay. Okay. I do know. I do not. I do not know where else to ask. So sorry to bother you. I'm a 30 year old man who has never been in a relationship, and I am now scared to seek one, thinking that I will be pathetic. How do I convince my ego that it's okay to be rejected by someone else instead of rejecting myself? Thank you so yeah. much, again, thank but, you so much for, for asking like, us. If you haven't got anywhere else and you came to us, that's what we want. That is, this is why we're here. This is why we're here. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's quite crushy now, but, <laughs> but really, it's yeah. like, thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. And, um, yeah, okay, let's begin. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I, again, I think we're gonna go through this bit by bit, but, um, so it seems to me like you've already rejected yourself, you know, you've already taken yourself out of the game because your last sentence was like, how do I allow other people to reject me instead of me rejecting myself? So that's something that you've already done, like you've taken yourself out of the market basically. But the fact that you're aware of it is a brilliant first step. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. Sorry, I don't give me. <laughs> yes. Um, like, it's really good that you're aware of the fact that you're doing this thing. Yeah. And then I want to talk about this particular dynamic of a rejection, okay? Okay. Because um, 
you I don't really know how to because it okay so I'm gonna put out that you may think that rejection only happens to people that um, that care a lot about whether they're gonna get rejected or not and or to people that are I don't know what I'm saying is that Jennifer Aniston was rejected <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this doesn't sound like it's but basically so rejection maybe... happens to everyone. Oh shut up. A little bit. It'll pass. It is raining. We can put the volley on your laptop, maybe. Yeah? 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 Probably, yeah. It's only raining a tiny bit. Um Okay, look. We can I'm put your gonna... laptop on that chair and then open the brolly. We can't because it needs to be here. If we can just like put the brolly here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. We will come back to this. Um, just technical thing. Technical thing. It's raining. But again, we're not cutting because it's we're not cutting. Mariam, uh, keep talking yeah, about yeah, what you're yeah, talking yeah. about. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is that rejection happens to everyone. It's just that you haven't experienced it because you haven't put yourself out there, right? So, so rejection is just something that one will just have to deal with once they're out in the market. In the last year, I had like two really brutal rejections and those were towards people that I really cared about and it, it, it sucked. Um, so I really, I really hope that there's a way for, yeah, for you to, to, to basically understand that there is a learning to be rejected is an art form and i will say one thing that worries me about talking about rejection in that sort of sense is like oh you're just gonna like oh my god get over it <laughs> but why don't you just put the sun thingy though because that's attached to this the is, this is low production for him <laughs> this is what it does <laughs> okay i'm just gonna put it on it um upside down fine good 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 <laughs> oh, do, do we need one for the phone to be fair it's not Oh, it's not uh, raining, hasn't it, obviously? No, I think so, yeah. Okay, okay. good. Look <laughs> at the frame. Does it look funny with the umbrella? A little, but it's all right. Well, look, if it stops completely, we'll... You just toss it to the side. Yeah. Okay, uh, because the natural conclusion where having been rejected uh, too much leads to is that you become that guy, and I'm sorry to say a guy, but, like, it just literally... Uh, that, I guess that's all I had to deal with pretty much. It's like that guy that just like tries, 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 gets rejected, doesn't give a shit, doesn't care anymore because they're so desensitized to being rejected. So there's this fine line between learning to be rejected and understanding that it's not about you, it's about where they were in that particular time in their lives, whether, uh, you know, whether they're probably fancy worse people than you are. <laughs> Like yeah, if they end up like going out with someone who you think is not as not great attractive as you, at all, and agrees. Like yeah, if it fucking happens. Exactly. <laughs> so 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 and and so basically going for people, but learning that there is line there, and there is that the 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 they cats out there that like don't give a shit about being rejected. They just try try try. They are being annoying. They're being quite abrasive. Well, not abrasive. I don't know like. Yeah, pushy, like pushy with this, and they basically they've learned to be rejected so much that they don't give a shit anymore. Yeah, and don't be that guy. So don't be that guy. So basically, I think there is a fine art to the the science of being rejected, and I think some of it you there's this I don't know. This is gonna sound really over romantic and that, but there's something to be said about the feeling of exquisite pain of rejection that like brings all sorts of creativity and like um, wanting to be a better person. And like I think of what I've achieved in my professional life wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't be rejected as well actually and so you know in a weird way it has pushed me towards better places that um, you know so well, yeah because what rejection does is it, it like being rejected either forces you to be like I'm a piece of shit and wallow and be like no one will ever love me or it will be like I need to realize like you've already acknowledged in your last sentence like you need to realize your self-worth is not defined by the person also this person wouldn't look good anyway or if they were like but like yeah to, to come out of rejection being like, actually, I'm fucking great, and, you know, their loss or whatever, like, yeah, it, like, definitely there's a bit of the wallowing and being like... Oh, it's not but... even their loss, but it's just like, I, I was never gonna be able to make them happy, you know? Yeah, sure, and that's, that's okay, because, honestly, being in a relationship that sucks is kind of worse than being rejected. Yeah, like... Yeah, no, that's really passing, <laughs> yeah, like, it's really far, again, too much information, but whatever, like, I mean... Oh fuck you, you can't know by now. So, um, <laughs> someone that 
recently very you know very gallantly to the fair rejected me like all all power to you know um drove a huge jeep uh and oh. and so that to me was like sexy as fuck and that's and um so you know i was going through a difficult period of, of rejection all of that stuff and then one thing that pulled me out of it completely is learning to drive so I've learned to drive now, yeah. and, and it's, it's really nice, and basically, um, yeah, I had to go through that terrible plight, and it was dark, Rowan saw me through it, it was dark, <laughs> but um, but at the end of it, I am a better person, so so I completely understand your fear of rejection, and yes, in a way it, that enriches our lives, and makes us better sometimes, not to say, not to completely, not to say that the pain that you feel through it is not yeah. If it's someone you really like and they reject you, that will fucking hurt. We are not saying that won't fucking hurt. And you will cry for a week, two weeks, this, this. You'll do maybe things that are Months, silly. Years. Yeah. But you will, like... I mean, I... I mean, no one got, not got rejected, but... I mean, essentially got rejected, right? In a... a like... A, but what happened from You're that? You're too good! <laughs> yeah, but like essentially something that I really wanted to happen didn't happen and ended up going very wrong for me. And I moved to London, I left the country, moved to London, and I started doing Agony Arts with Marianne. And this, what, the thing that lifted me out of that the most is realising that like with me and the person who I wasn't with, but there was this whole scenario, uh, did, we were doing a creative project together. And then I started doing a creative project with Marianne instead. And this has been like the best, like, I don't know, what's the word? Um, like rebound. <laughs> but like, you know, like, I, I came with my own, I found a different project that I wasn't defined by that person or that project I was doing with that person or any of that. Like, I saw that I was capable of doing a multitude of things, one of which is this show, and that was really, But really that's important. not something you see during that period of no. like absolute, you know, all consuming yeah. pain, absolutely. So it's just like, not to over -rom romanticize or like not to not to completely fetishize the, the bit where you're on the other end of it but just to say that yeah what i think both you and me share is like uh, a rejection has improved our lives yeah yeah but also i want to uh slightly change of subject i feel like the sense of re the type of rejection they are talking about is maybe more of the like hitting on someone in a bar and getting rejected like that off the cuff not the not the like I have fallen for this person and they've rejected me thing. It sounds like you're scared of even oh like not scared but like anxious about even making a move because that person might knock you back and you know like I want to say fuck it because you you might never see the person again and you should take that risk but I also know that I don't take that risk I don't hit on people because I'm scared <laughs> of rejection so like <laughs> I guess I'm more desensitized. To yeah, you, you are. And I, <laughs> but I've said this before. Like, I really yeah. admire your ability to like you flirt well, with someone right. and you show that you're flirting with them and you like are putting yourself out there. And like sometimes and then it, they get rejected, it scores, <laughs> and sometimes you get rejected. But if it's not already the like the deep love, I really want to be with this person. Getting rejected, it's kind of like not to your confidence. But it's also you you pick yourself up and you go yeah. out again the next week. Like yeah, but it's not in a creepy way. <laughs> which and there are plenty of people that are creepy. So yeah. one thing that will maybe advise, and that's something, oh, it's annoying though, but it's actually amazing, episode 8, I guess we literally can do that. But something that we, re I think we talked about in episode even, one or two, is um, I think one place where you would really learn the, uh, the, the, I don't know, the, ropes. <laughs> the ropes, and it's, it's, it's a bondage class. Sorry, that was a crap rope joke. No, this is, this is why you were a stand-up comedian, that was fucking good, like, <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> because that's just too always to me is like how much time do I put into something and how many rewards like how much mm -hmm. of a reward it gives me so Tinder is fairly like low investment right and and that rejection like kind of doesn't matter because like maybe that person hasn't logged into the phone for that long so they haven't seen my profile so it literally doesn't care you like you literally don't care yeah and yet this is where the crucial part comes in and now I've actually like I have now looked through quite a few Tinder uh, profiles, and I will say, me, we will offer a, your Tinder profile completely made for you for three hundred pounds, one hundred and fifty each. It's a day's work because 
gonna take you out. Photos. I'm gonna take you out, gonna make all the photos in all different settings and in all different ways of like structures of the photos and I will advise you on the profile. But it's hard but it's because gonna we be totally different things from the Tinder profile, right? Five? But then we you can have five like... pictures or six pictures, yeah. so we can totally fit that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so basically what I'm saying... Nah, we like, ourselves basically ourselves. what I'm saying is like, I'll look through Tinder, it's just... It's fucking terrible. Like, it's fucking terrible. Yeah. Also, it's all just gritty, great, terrible pictures. People that could be hot as fuck look terrible on them, and people that actually, whatever stereotype, or not even stereotypically, but for me, it wouldn't be my cup of tea. I go like, pow, amazing, amazing little yeah. profile. And this, they, they know how to take pictures. Short. They know how to take pictures. They have like a certain story to them. When I say story, I say two sentences. Um, and I'm like, yeah, let's go. Not to say that I've actually done anything with it, but you know, it's just like, it's research, which you play. <laughs> but also there are ways, like, it's one thing is a Tinder profile, but the other thing is a Tinder conversation. And one thing I would recommend is I'm part of this Facebook group, it's called, um, Is This How You Flirt? And there people post pictures of terrible Tinder openers and terrible ways of hitting on people and just ter- like, how to not do Tinder is, is basically what it is. I like, think my weirdest one thus far has been receiving a gift of a track for picking up a roll of hay and yeah. the roll of hay looks a lot like a tampon because it's got the string to it so that was the weirdest opener did you, did you say anything got. alongside that? i was like that was officially the weirdest opener on tinder thus far uh, yeah <laughs> yeah but um i mean i'm guessing you have also probably tried tinder like it's like you've but never been in a relationship with a shitty but... profile though but also okay something i would want to say that's maybe not always what we say but i want to say it anyway is like you've never been in a relationship like how are you in the first few weeks of dating i don't know if you've ever dated but like in the first you know like maybe you've had a date maybe you had a tinder conversation and it hasn't gone somewhere and i'm wondering if there's something about your behaviors as well like we're, we're, we're like we're on the side of our viewers obviously but you might be coming across too strong or like we yes we say like overbearing too keen you wax out your dick pic within 30 seconds like <laughs> don't ask questions yeah don't ask questions about them don't like i mean yeah find some funny memes send those along like we also have ones we have specific videos about how to do online dating we have specific videos about how to flirt without being a creep these are all things that i would check out as well um yes. with various yeah. amount, various levels of drunkenness for us so it's like... so it's one thing is like knowing how to use these platforms it's nothing like how are you yourself like comporting yourself socially and because like yeah we say like you know it's the whole we created a monster thing right we say like be open and be honest about what you want what that doesn't mean is saying to someone you on your first date like can we make out in the first 15 minutes yeah because i went on a tinder date once and it was going terribly we had nothing in common i didn't find him attractive it was really bad and at the end of the date he said so can i kiss you and this was me a few years ago, and I was more insecure than I was now. And I was just like, yeah, okay. And I kissed him. Okay. I kissed well, you him. didn't want to. No, I didn't want to. Oh. But I felt like in that scenario, like, it, it would be, like, more shit for me to, like, have to, like... I, 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 felt, I felt trapped by that situation, the... basically. Okay. And the kiss no, was terrible. Yes. Oh, okay, that's true. And then, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't like, and then. <laughs> <laughs> so painful. But, um, but yeah. So that was like me being put in a really shitty situation by someone. So we also have a lot of videos about reading signals. And like, yeah, maybe on a Tinder date, and maybe things are going well. But before you say, can I kiss you? You could say, I'm really enjoying this. Would you be up to meet again? And see whether she says, yeah, sure, definitely. How about next week? And whether she says, yeah, maybe. Totally. Or like, like, do you think we've clicked? And they go like, yeah, man. Or did they go like, yeah, sure, sure. sure. Are you like video games? I do too. Yeah. So... Like, I do not doubt that there is someone for you because there are so many fucking people in this world. But, yeah, and like, so many dickheads are having yeah. a, an amazing woman all the time. And it's just like, it's yeah. so annoying. But I would say is like, read some like feminist stuff about how to like be a dude without being a creep and like how to hit on people and how to engage in a non like, because women are sick of people saying like, blah, 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 suck my dick or blah, 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 dick pic or blah, 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 can we make out or. Uh... But yeah, obviously, uh, unfortunately, it depends on who. But the point is, like, depends on the dick. Okay. <laughs> depends on the dick. But also, I'm so sorry, you know, yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, yes, there are ways of being charming and interesting and cool without whacking your dong out. 
and I don't. I'm not saying you're doing that, but oh. I'm saying that the advice that men give men is often pretty shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you could never, never. That's a, yeah. I think that's advice we will never give. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Do with friends. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because actually, that's something that you and me talked about um, with a couple of people in in um, in the park after our uh, I want to say last no the first live show. We yeah. were talking about like the shame of Tinder and the shame of hooking up mm. and the fact that only women ha- get that, whereas with dudes, just like, oh, it's scored some. Yeah. And you, yeah, you always have to recognize that like a woman may well come out of a like one night stand situation feeling very different to you because of the stigma on women having casual sex. Because you are seen as a player and she is totally. seen as a slut. And like, totally. and recognize that. And like, I've talked in a previous video about how uh, one of my what boyfriends. Amazing. One of my boyfriends used to, like, the first time we hooked up, like, we slept together, and then next day he said, do you want to go for lunch? And I was like, oh, oh, right, you don't just want to, like, bang me and leave. And it was such a shock to me. And, like, even if she says no, like, making it not feel like someone has been used and recognising it, even if you're the nicest guy, the coolest guy, you have the most consensual, sexy sex ever, she may well still feel a bit weird the next day because of that stigma that is so hard, so hard to rid yourself of. Mate, like, I remember you mentioned that, and I was like, oh, but now more than ever, I've just, well, I've seen yeah. that. <laughs> so, like, yeah. And also, like, if you're, if you're worried about the stigma of being 30 and never had a relationship, like, fucking fine. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. But age is, like, really, really true, don't give a shit. Do you no. know how many people, like, go, like, oh, I'm 20, I've never had a relationship. Yeah. I was like, so, yeah. And whatever. also, like, you can be 30 and have had a, had a series of, like, six months long shitty relationships because you're a shitty person. That doesn't make you a better person than you who's ever had one. Like, totally. So, totally. yeah. I wouldn't necessarily bring it up on a on your first date because I mean sure. I just remember I went on the date with this guy and then I was about to hook up with him and he said I've never had sex before and I was like I was I don't know maybe this is me being like super problematic but I was like I don't like you enough to feel like I should be the one that takes your virginity yeah yeah that's, and it put me in this position like and I just wish like I would have had sex with him if you hadn't said that maybe that's me being super uncool it possibly is right but. I didn't feel comfortable I, taking on that responsibility. I've never, never, I've never had that experience. Yeah, so I, I, I rolled over and continued to go to sleep. But now I'm like, maybe I should have done it. It could have been a really good way for him to have done that. But I, I knew I didn't want to see him again. And I didn't want to leave him on. But it also, it put, yeah. I also wouldn't put it, Pat. Okay, not to say that this is, happened, this is your situation. But basically, fuckboys exist. They, they also come up with things. Also just to get a girl. So I think there have been certain things that have been told to me that are not necessarily true just to get me but that's like the opposite effect <laughs> no but like they, they, they helped as in like mm. i was like yeah let's go but coming to yeah. come to think of it like i think they were full of shit <laughs> yeah I they were like oh and this and that yeah like, yeah yeah and it's just so don't do that either like obviously like you don't have to be like hi i'm bob and i've never had a relationship but also don't lie if you're talking about yeah. exes just be like yeah i've never really had anyone like super meaningful like fine like yeah also valid you're, you're like you're only 30 like, like a player player a lot of people spend their 20s just fucking around and that's valid too and like never had relationships it's yeah. not a like it's not a stigma and if anyone acts like it's a stigma then don't date them because they sound like an asshole and uh, yeah no i guess something to also to be said about like feeling secure in being single and this is like i don't want to go into that like any further i'm just gonna say that. I envy you because you seem to have security in yourself. Something that's whatever issues there are, like I, I, I struggle with sometimes. So um, I think, yeah, like a being a, a strong, independent person is 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 is, is a huge. Uh, someone that doesn't have that particular thing to rely on is uh, is, is 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 a huge plus of yours and. Um, but if you are like interested in like you know like aesthetical choices or like how to make yourself be more appealing we do talk about this from a totally subjective yeah. perspective yeah, in yeah, other yeah, videos yeah. like yeah. if you want like our opinions on this stuff we have yeah we have covered it like <laughs> I feel like our episodes are getting longer and longer yeah <laughs> because I guess we also get like more and more confidence in actually putting our opinions mm. across in a sense so also I will already say that at some point we will have to have to make a cut just because I need to pee same but also um which is something that we did in previous ones the other one was technical uh but also because i need to uh delete these videos out of the device that we're filming in uh for the computer yeah 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 so should we do it now yeah sorry no you you're still attached to your mic 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 come back down no not in the pool
Fuck it. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. No, no, no. The cable is fine. Is the cable fine? I don't know. I don't know. It's not rescue. Hey! Okay. Alright, okay, I'm gonna keep. Oh god, this is wonderful. Okay, so. No wonder I feel more drug than usual with these ones. It's like, we're in warm waters. <laughs> we we're can in pretend. hot waters. <laughs> we can. <laughs> we are in hot water. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was a brief technical break, which did definitely not include filling up the paddling pool with warmer water. The thing is, is that, like, the weather is cold, right? But we are. Um, dedicated. We're dedicated. It, so we have to pump the main, so we have to warm up the water. It's all very yeah, bullshit. It was like 28 degrees the last three days, and today it's 20, but we are making do. Okay, all right, let's go. So, Mariam, over to you. Oh, oh, hi, comrades. Love your show. We love you, by the way. Oh. Recently escaped falling down the Jordan Peterson hole and left you with large leaks to thank. Amazing. Amazing. Babes, this is... Oh. Yeah, this is our mission. Yeah, this like, is our mission. I know we're not the only people on left no. tube, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that you sought out alternative media and have managed to take yourself away from that is, like, super fucking cool. Huge. Ugh. Right, okay. I'm a cis... Uh, I'm a bi cis guy, and I've absorbed lots of homophobia, sexism, over the years, which I've internalized. But how aren't we all? Uh, I've only hooked up with other... No, that's me saying how aren't we all. That's not the person we... Anyways. Uh, I've only hooked up with other guys and I've never been in an emotionally intimate relationship at all. I often feel inadequate as a man and have anxiety that women won't be attracted to me because I'm too feminine. Many just assume I'm gay. I know this is problematic mindset, but I'm working on it by dipping my toe into dating girls. As I'm tentative and anxious as fuck about intimacy, I often get cold feet and then feel guilty for basically leading girls only to leave them hanging. Obviously, I've got issues, but how can I explore my sexuality and build my confidence up without being such a waste man? Yeah, I, uh, I have a little bit of a lack of uh, sympathy with you just though with this whole like, hey, I can't decide on my sexuality, so I'm going to fuck over girls. Like, ah. Uh. I've been fucked over by those men and like I don't like it. But my point is if you want to like explore your sexuality regarding women, you can do that with women who are equally happy to have a one night stand. Yeah. Like there are lots of women that are into casual dating. Not every woman wants to have a meaningful relationship, so And this person is like casually it's just like Yeah, I've definitely led some women on. It's just like Sure, but at least he's well, acknowledging that and he's kind of, he's looking for help. He's looking to change that and that's what we're here for. Fine. This is where my personal experience <laughs> kind of struggles, like to really empathize with you. Uh, no, because I, I definitely feel like I have been used like that. But sometimes. I definitely empathize with the idea of like wanting to do something casual with someone and then finding yourself falling into a like quite intense dating scenario when you're not ready for that. And you just wanted to kind of like hang out a few times and they, they're sure, like... Sure, but you still have responsibility. Yeah, you right? have guilt. And it sounds like he has guilt, I think, like about leading these girls no, on. Okay, so on the one hand, don't do that. On the other hand, there are plenty of women that just want to like have casual flings, have one night stands, like fuck around, fool around, if that's what you're interested in doing. It sounds like, like you want to explore your sexuality with women, which is fine, do that through sex. But like, if you want to explore dating with women, don't lead women on. Like, Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So basically, yeah, thank you so much for like writing in. And I'm so glad that you like escaped the left tube and all that. But um, I kind of... I don't really understand as in like you recently you know you're you you're kind of like trying t so you I, I suppose you're being seen as too feminine of a guy uh, is that true or is that just coming from you though like has anyone actually said that you're too feminine or said that they thought you were gay also like what does that even mean like i mean there's basically that the, there's definitely um I, th I think you will find a lot of people there aren't that many people that are really into like the, the stereotypically masculine dude as Yeah, such. I find like, myself attracted to men all the time only to find out they're gay. And so like to, <laughs> to have that feeling and be like, oh my God, you're not? Yes! Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of people are into more feminine men and like femininity in general, which I think is like, yeah, fine. And you'll yeah. definitely find people who are into that sensitivity if it's not combined with misogyny yeah. and a mistrust of women, yeah. which you recognize you need to work on, which is really good. Yeah. And watching our show is a great, great step. For sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I know, I just, I kind of like, read it a little bit as like, um, I'm trying to, to explore my sexuality with, uh, with like the, the, 
the ladies that search before them, I'm like too feminine, and then I've led them on, and like I don't really. Yeah, you're kind of. Really you say both things. Both you're too feminine, and therefore you're not successful. But also you led them on, and therefore you were successful, but didn't like it. Yeah. Like, is it that you just want to sleep with a bunch of women? Because that's there are ways of doing that for sure, and there are ways of doing that and not being an asshole about it. Like, you can be into hookup and then not be an asshole. And we've given advice on how to do that before. Yeah, but I have had people. Um, Fuck it, you know, like, fuck it. <laughs> this is the one more safe space where I can talk about this, actually. I don't know, like, led me on that they are gay for me to feel safe around them, that they're not going to objectify me. I felt safe, safe, safe around them to do that, only for them to then one day be like, I'm actually bi, and then actually, I'm really into you. Yes. Sorry, yes, do not like, end up using I your. Totally <laughs> this, but like, this is how it went. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yes, do not use your like femininity, therefore or like red, red as safety, in order to get close to women. Like, I mean, obviously the main thing is of like, be open about what you want. Be like, hey, I'm actually just like, I haven't really dated that many women, and I'm really interested in like hooking up. I think you're super cute. Fine. Don't say like. I think it's super meaningful to go somewhere, sleep with her once, and then leave her. Like, just yeah. be open about what you expect. Because like, I've had one night stands where I've said from the off offset. I just kind of want to hook up tonight. Are you down? And it's been great. And I've had one I've night never stands. Done that. Yeah, I did that. You know, recently-ish. Like, yeah, no, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, and I've also had one night stand. No, I haven't had one night stands, but I know people who've had one night stands where they expected something more, and the next day it was they were left feeling like shit because the person didn't say to them explicitly that all it was going to be was a one night thing. So it's like, if you don't want to lead women on, don't lead women on. And <laughs> And like, if the girl is not interested, once you've said you're only interested when I stand, then don't sleep with her. Like, there will be women that are interested in doing that. It is not okay to sleep with a woman under false pretenses and yeah. then ghost. Like, yeah, it's a bit of a soft boy material here. No, look, maybe, okay, look, maybe maybe we're not being generous. Let's do this again. Because mm -hmm. um, he is recognizing his bad tendencies. Obviously, I've got issues. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but uh, how can I explore my sexuality and build my confidence up without being such a waste man? Like, he's aware of the fact that he's yes, being problematic, which is sure. really cool. Yes, yes. Like, I'm sorry, I'm purely projecting here. I'm really, really sorry. I'm probably, you're probably better than the people I had to deal with, and so I feel really bad. But, like, unlearning sexism is really fucking hard. We are in the process yes, of it, and we're women, like, and we're, like, lefty feminist women, and we are still unlearning sexism. 100%. Like, <laughs> constantly. <laughs> so, like... And misogyny. And, yeah, and misogyny stuff, and yeah. everything. And homophobia. Like, it's all stuff that we were socialised into, and we are 100%. putting... A Active efforts into unlearning, but you do not unlearn sexism through sleeping with a load of women and leading them on. Yeah. You unlearn sexism through learning to be one, learning to be a good communicator, which involves saying what you expect from the relationship or yeah. hook up or whatever, yeah. saying what or you're friendship. into, what you're not into, like yeah, saying when things aren't okay with you, recognizing, listening, and sensing when things are not okay with them sensing and like asking about what they expect from a situation understanding the historical plight that women had to go through for us to be able to film yeah. a show like this. I mean, we talked like five minutes ago in a previous question about how there is this whole like when a woman has a one night stand she's left being like a slut he's left oh. being like a, a player recognize that and don't just hear it know it and act differently even if all you want is a one night stand do not do not be shit to her the morning after. Oh my god, like, this is fascinating because like you, I, I, I... Wait, wait, I'm getting a towel basically with what I'm doing. No, yeah, I'll find it. Anyways, so, um, I thought that that was like a stere like that's sort of like violent created thing. That whole thing about like men can get out of like a one night stand without feeling anything. And then we spoke to quite a few of our leftist, radical leftist friends and they go like, yeah, it's just like a score thing. And like, and they're amazing feminists every day they really are but it's just like they talk with their friends and it's just like the way that it's internalized is really is still that but that's the thing like unlearning sexism it also means uninternalizing toxic masculinity like the fact that men often feel nothing after one night stand that's not them being like superior that's actually a, a worrying thing that they have had this like that yes sex can just be fun and play and sure but like the fact that they have this connection with someone and feel nothing that's not a thing that women want to strive to be more like women no. don't want to become detached exactly. from sexual situations unless they want them to and blah 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 it's fine but like yeah like learning to recognize like sexual intimacy as a form of intimacy when it seems like that's where the situation is going if it's like we'll, we'll meet out let's go have sex cool fine but if it's like a date and that person is clearly into you and then you go home and have sex with them recognizing that as an actual 
experience that they have like privileged you with totally. like they have privileged you with being allowed to be involved in an intimate totally. situation with them and treating them right afterwards and that doesn't mean you have to date every girl no. you hook up with but just be nice just be nice ask oh if they want my breakfast God. like you know say you had a really good time if they say can we meet up again be like oh you know actually like i was really interested at the one time thing i hope i made totally. it clear from the start but i really like you and i wish you the best like you can have a one night stand without making the other person feel like shit totally jesus guys and do you not say you want to see someone again if you don't Oh either. god, like, yeah, it's just like, yeah, yeah, I know, I just, I so, so feel what you just said right now, because like, basically, how it is in the mainstream, for women, and I swear, it really, it kind of is just for us, it's like, they like, hook spaghetti all over your, your ears, that's a, maybe a Lithuanian expression, <laughs> yeah, I love but it, what does that mean? It's just like, it's like, uh, I don't know, leading you on, okay. or whatever, they hook spaghetti like, oh. over your ears, yeah. I love that, <laughs> um, only to the point where like you get to to, mm. to to the thing right and although that could have been like month like months and weeks of conversation yeah. all of that stuff and then they'll be like are you okay yeah i'm fine i just really need a coffee there's a coffee shop around the corner <laughs> yeah and it's just like you're being about and you could just not do that if you said at any stage in the tinder conversations or whatever that like hey uh, like it'd be cool to hook yeah, up yeah, how do you feel yeah, about yeah, that yeah. and you say but and, but yeah you can like there is no dichotomy between the only way you'll get laid is if you make a woman think she's going to have a relationship. Like, we're not all in the 19th century now. Like, w some women want to have casual sex. Me? Okay, so let's address this. And I'm so sorry if this is, like, outside of your question, but, like, fuck it. Like, I can... I'm so sick of... Again, even in this conversation, it's like, one in stands. Like, the fact that we are having to feel guilty over a certain desire because we then fall... Um, below a certain expectation of what a feminist needs to be you know, basically yeah every now and then yeah you do just want to like you just want to fuck just want to fuck you <laughs> I don't I'm know, not gonna go graphic that but you do just want to do certain things that are not like necessarily freezing you yourself and it's just like it's sexy for you but the way that in the patriarchal society it gets perceived is just that like you are there to then be there for that man and please but like, him. But like, for example, one of the main feminist arguments is that like, you know, men should go down on women more, right? Like, yeah. and they don't. <laughs> but like, I get off on like going down on a dude. I get off on giving blowjobs because I like, if I like the person, I like seeing them crumble beneath my might. Like, I like that. And, and I feel like a lot of men, once they've actually gone down to women and are so fucking scared of it, like, they like that too. It's like an amazing power to hold over someone. But the fact is, if a woman goes down on a man, like, this is all very, like, uh, cis-centric, I guess, but, like, whatever, like, in general, in mainstream society, she's given him something. She's taken away oh from her God. own worth, and That's he has so gained it. in his worth. Absolutely. And it's this weird transactional thing where she's lost something and he's gained something. And that's, like... Not true for us, but the way in which it's read and the way in which it's portrayed and the way in which that dude may well go and talk to his friends about it is I got this girl to do this degrading thing. Don't! Oh, but yeah. like, oh God. Like, I am still having to learn that people want to go down on me. Like, actually want to. Mm. Though I really desire to do that for the opposite sex as such. But I worry that they will see it as you know, as, as, as like me being degraded. Mm. It's like basically because I've been so socialized for seeing that like someone going down, like basically me going down on someone is degrading that I, I cannot help but like apologize when someone does that to me. And yeah. Bullshit. Or the other problem is that if someone goes down on me, I therefore assume that they expect something else. True. That they then, like yeah. I went down on you, get down there girl, you yeah. know? And if, like, yeah, again, it becomes transactional. Like the second, I mean, in a non-sex work sense, the second like uh, sexual encounter becomes transactional. It's not really a consensual sexual encounter because you're doing something because you feel like you ought to. Yeah. Whereas, like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do you, have you gone down on women? Do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy making them come? If not, why not? Do you get off on them coming down, going down on you? Why? Like, because you know, we're like, like, I'm into BDSM. I'm into. I'm into the idea of like being degraded in a consensual scenario. I am not into the idea of that guy going and telling his friends, I got her to do this. Also, it's so, again, it's so not about gender necessarily. And that's something that we talked a bit, a lot about in the class. It's just like, who the fuck you find hot? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> just like, there's so many women that would be privileged to touch. Yeah. And yet all these dudes that are not on my top at all attempt at me because they know I'm fairly straight as yeah. such. 
Ugh. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. But like, yeah. I'm, not, I'm really sorry that we definitely like went into our own whatever experiences in this question. But like, I don't know, you haven't presented us. Basically, you know, you have issues and we're telling you a bit more as to. And the main thing about. is like, yeah, if you're leading people on, that's on you. There yeah. is there is no Stop way that. in which oh, that's definitely raining like, now. Yeah, it is. That does not have to happen. And there are ways on like ways of explaining what you want to do. If you want to be a feminist, if you're aware that you have unhealthy behaviors, learn to communicate like and that doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to be like, I would like to have sex with you. Would you like to have sex with me too? It can be like, hey, girl, do you want to go back to mine? I mean, like, you know, like I'm Do you think we've clicked? But again, like, but like you know, I like, I'd like, I'd like really like to get down on you, but like also, you know, I have work in the morning. I have that done to me by people that I've never flirted with. So yeah, that's also don't weird. do that. But like, yeah, we have videos about reading signals. We have videos about how to hook up, how to not be a creep. We, I mean, you've watched our channel, so you know We're that. We're victims of our own success at this point. <laughs> but yeah, like, and also um, send us in another question if you have like more uh, precise advice you want, yeah. because like it sounds like you know where you're going wrong and it sounds like you don't quite know where you're going right and the ways in which to go right we have kind of previously explored a little bit but also um sorry but also have, careful it's um on the edge of the pool can you push that down a little bit yeah but yeah um maybe we came across a little hard on you and i don't want that like i don't want you to feel like you can't talk to us because we are hardline about these things, but we are hardline about men fucking over women for a good reason. And it sounds like you recognise that that is a good thing. And that's why you decided to speak to us, even though you thought you might get roasted. But like I said, like, it's so fucking cool that you were down the Jordan Peterson alley and recognised that that was not cool and came to us instead. Like, amazing. And yeah, send, send us, if you want more info on something more specific, like, check out our other videos if you haven't already. And also, yeah, write in again. Yeah. Think. Yeah. For yeah. sure. It's not raining again. What is going on with this weather? We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. okay. Let's let's power through this. Power through. You cold? No. Well, maybe. I don't know. I don't even know what's going I'm on. I'm alright now. I think I'm drunk enough now <laughs> to not be cold. A couple okay. more kettles. No. No. I'm now or we no, have okay, one, two, three, four. What's more. the next one? The next one is the beauty standards one. <laughs> okay. So. What is the difference between a healthy desire to look attractive and an unhealthy desire to conform to fucked up gendered racialized beauty standards? Is wanting to get laid a bad reason to work out slash lose weight? I have a friend, legit, who ignores his health and hygiene and uses the fact that beauty norms are constructed and oppressive as justification. It wouldn't be an issue, but he's clearly and actually just trying to oppress some things. How can I convince him that it's possible to be liberated and want to look attractive? First thing I would say is watch ContraPoints on beauty. Yes, 100%. That's a... Again, as much as like ContraPoints is like, you always want your favorite lefty to like somehow make a mistake. Well, not that you want, but like that usually is what We're happens. We're just fucking jealous, basically. Like, she is amazing. Like, we will have a conversation about fucked up beauty standards in the garage with over a cigarette, and then the next day she'll produce the perfect fucking video exactly explaining what She's we were so talking funny. about. And like, we are like, I. Full disclosure, I had a dream where ContraPoints retweeted one of our videos, and it was like the happiest dream of my life. <laughs> Again, you may have seen that there's a cut here. Um, I can get into like the, the the the. My phone went out of battery. I had to recharge it quickly. I'm sorry. We should have said before, but Thanks I panicked. For me. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> but um. So look. Um. I don't know. I worry a little bit over your use of the word legit. That just being like, hey, that's definitely what they that they have issues, and yet they're not working through them. See, I thought legit meant that they were talking about themselves and just pretending it was a friend. I think that they're saying that it's just like they definitely have some issues and yet they're not talking about them. Um, so, look, fundamentally, um, we are also called out on this all the time. The fact that we're a bit react, well, we're quite reactionary as to like our fairly stereotypical ways of, of like defining uh, what is attractive. I would like to think I'm the culprit in this and Rowan is actually way more open hearted no, on this. Th the point we make is that like, Whilst there is like the queer feminist utopian vision of a world in which these things don't matter, we don't live in that world yet. And like, yes, someone will find everyone attractive. And yes, like, you do definitely not have to change your aesthetic or anything for anyone else. And yet, there are unfortunately certain aesthetics, certain body types, certain fucking like colors of skin that like are seen as more attractive in our bullshit fucking society okay. like that is a, that is a thing that we have to both work with and fight against kind of simultaneously so 
Okay, so I'll bring up two things there. One is like a very personal thing that like I had to deal with fairly recently as in like, look, apparently in like the the liberated left, like no one cares about burping because like we just burp, like who cares? Like no one gives a shit. It's like burp is like such a natural thing. And so we should be totally like farting as well. All of that stuff. And yet, yeah, okay, so I grew up like whenever from age eight to 15, I grew up in a in a house where I was living, there was basically a kitchen and toilet in one end of the corridor, and then one bedroom in one and another end of the corridor, and then another bedroom in the other. One of them was for my brother, and the other one was for me and my both of my parents. And, um, and in the corridor, I was living with fairly, um, I suppose with like Marozi, like in, I think the Eastern hemisphere of my listeners will understand is like people that like uh, kind of anti fairly antisocial. I know I hate to use this term, but basically it was like people in their 20s and 30s that would spend their time drinking the corridor and like um, swearing and like vomiting and burping and doing all of that stuff because it was really their way of going through that particular day, which I completely understand, are like, you know, the sunflower was it, seeds and... Was that a form of, like, rebellion? As in, like, f the world has fucked me over, so fuck the world back? I don't think there was a political project behind no, it. but, like, I mean, subconsciously, or was it just, like... Because I feel like, you know, you see, like, teenagers spitting on the street and you're, like, gross, but also you're, like, they're no, doing that... No, it's just, that. like, it's people that, like, have, you know, have very, very little resources. They don't really have a tomorrow... They, they don't really have like that many um, economic like um, prospects etc prospects as and um, and I think they saw our family because we were like two parents and two kids as like this nuclear family little did they know that we had fuck all money or whatnot but like they thought that like to a, a way to in their very very sort of like you know just like sing mm. single dudes living in Lithuania like asserting like, dominance or yeah yeah I, I, it's very difficult I could literally go into like marking the, territory a little bit a little bit um, and basically they would do burping competitions which is like fine but like when you're like I don't know a teenager nine year or not even teenager nine year eight to fifteen when you're trying to sleep and all that you hear on the other side of the door and it's a fucking thin door because they're in the corridor is all just like just burping competitions is like it's difficult and so I have this whole thing where like I can't necessarily and oh it's so popular around the middle class squatting scene it's like people just burping and um I find it I hate to use the word triggering but it kind no, of is it's, yeah it's coming back to a traumatic part of your past that yeah. is literally what triggering <laughs> means dude like. and so and, and so I really hate it when people like burp around me like and it took me years to call people out on it I remember when you did it when we were in Croatia and everyone talked about like one thing they didn't like and you said burping and I, I still remember that <laughs> and like was like very aware of that. No, thank you, thank you. But um, again, no one else would ever necessarily even like say that that's a particular thing that they find a problem with and yet it was for me. And so I wonder perhaps if, if, if you know, uh, the person that is asking this question is, 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 is a bit triggered by a certain lack of whatever they would call hygiene or certain like aesthetical standards that they then like uh, um, assign to a lack of trying or a lack of or, or a lack of attempt to be part of a society or whatever. I mean, it's difficult, right? Because on the one hand, it's a class thing in terms of like hygiene and such. Like, you know, we like welcome homeless people and recognize a lot of people don't have access to showers and like cleanliness and such. There's one thing like acknowledging those things and you can even go as far as embrace those things and embrace a lack of hygiene as like an anti-capitalist project. That does not mean that people have to want to be in a shared space with you. Precisely. That's like, literally it. Like basic. Okay, to put my cards on the table, I have seen way more fairly posh people attempt these whole like, oh, you know, I'm like so hygiene. Yeah, literally hygiene or just like not burping or like for me to look scruffy it's just like you know everyone else around me just has to like deal with those issues yeah. but for me it's just like chill because probably they have this whole rebellion against their parents yeah it's or a fetishization like of like the squat aesthetic like a fetishization of poverty that is very yeah. problematic like i we have so met those people mm. and like maybe your friend is not that but like i really the fact that there's being so defiant about it as yeah. well just kind of sounds to me like that might be it. Because on the, like on the one hand, like obviously personal hygiene is your choice. On the other hand, if you are sharing a space with people, 
And you and and I might add very importantly, if you have the facilities and the availability to make yourself not like oppressively unhygienic, to not use them is to say that I am dictating who feels comfortable sharing the space with me. And maybe they're okay making that choice. And like, yeah, like I would never ever like someone who doesn't have access to facilities, like call them out or make them feel uncomfortable for having like poor hygiene. Never. Of course. But of if you're course. making an active choice. You are then that's, acknowledging that you're making that yeah. space uncomfortable for other people, and that's on you, your friend, whatever. Like, yeah, 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 but yeah. I don't know. This is totally again us projecting. It's just that, like, I have, as I say, we, I think we both have met those people that like say, oh, you know, Western stereotypical values, and yet, and so I'm not gonna uh, assign myself to them, and yet they are rebelling pretty much against their, like, the way that they've been brought up, and yet. Uh, and so basically, they never have to actually um, even assign, you know, deal with those issues. Look, do I always want to be like made up, like all cute little like blazers and like a little bit of makeup? Of course I don't. It's just that I know that if I'm going to try and get a job, like these are the sort of expectations that I'm going to try and have to reach or like hope that hope to be accepted. Is that cool? No, it isn't. And we're in our own ways of activism are trying to destroy that sort of capitalism way of thinking and yet i have found that people that can like just never think about this shit usually are never are always the people that um don't have to fit in in the in 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 that well, in that milieu this is the thing because I, I feel like there's two parts to this question one is about beauty standards and one is about hygiene. Yeah. And I feel like yeah. we are talking mostly about the totally, hygiene part totally, and like totally. that like if hygiene is not your choice, then never ever feel like bad for that. If you're making a political project out of having poor hygiene when you have the facilities not to, that's your cool. And some people might not feel comfortable in that space with you, and that's also their cool and completely within their right. And they are not bad activists because they don't want to share a space with someone who is deliberately having poor hygiene. Yeah. In terms of the stereotypical beauty yeah. standards, it's just like Look, we've all watched Love Island. We know what this. What, you know, we've all seen the magazines out there. We all know what the expectations are out there. Um, whether we conform to those or not is is so own choice. And I don't know. I worry a little bit about the question. The person that has asked the question really relying on the fact that there is only a one way to get a hookup. Because yeah. of course there isn't. Jesus, and honestly, come to a, think about it, it's yeah. just like the most. The, the the most long term, the most like aspirational relationships that you and me n like know of, don't rely on looks at all. They rely on connection. They rely on solidarity. They rely on like yeah. maybe professional connection, stuff communication, like that. mutual care and respect and responsibility. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, we've talked in a previous video the one about um, the one about the like uh, person who's worried about being overweight. We talked about in that video quite a lot about the the distinction between the societal expectation of beauty and the personal needs and desires. And we will I'll reiterate now just quickly is that like, if you want and feel comfortable and confident a certain way, don't fucking change that for society. And yet, of course, there are societal standards that we are all fucking aware of. We've all internalized and this and this and this, and we are all unlearning them. But if you want to fucking, you know, put on some lipstick to feel better, if you want to like wear a certain shirt or work out or whatever to feel better, that's totally okay too. One thing I will add, is uh you talk this is the one about working out right yeah i will add that um it's one thing to okay it's totally okay to want to get fit and lose weight in order to get a date in my opinion it's not okay to use a gym as a place to find potential dates and to like if a girl is working out in a gym and you think her ass looks good don't fucking hit on her she's working out she's doing her own thing but like yeah the whole thing of like we all simultaneously, and this is possible by the way, like some strands of feminism, simultaneously look good and feel fit for ourselves. But also, I'm not a fucking bad feminist or a bad woman or a bad person if I also like it when I put on some lipstick and I go out and people think I'm attractive. Yeah. Like, fucking sue But then me. you see, it's funny you say this because I also agree with you, but then, so someone underneath this exact video that you mentioned, the mm. one with the, with the, 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 someone like with the boobs and the belly, you should check that one out. Mm -hmm. Like the the comment below it was really, really potent and incredible. And reading that, I was just like, "Fuck! Why the fuck do I even care about my?" Looks? Basically, the way that they referred to it was like, 
kind of quoting. Oh, there's the one about their friend that wanted to get a nose job. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, should we just read it out? Can we do that? Can look, we... look, fuck it. Deal with this loading step. Can you, can uh, we do? Oh, so, so, so sorry. You see, this is the issues of being. <laughs> Technical issues are a thing when we are yeah, filming this entirely <laughs> off phones. Like, you know what? If you want better, fucking fund us. PayPal. Um, okay, your channel. A bit just lower, yeah, yeah. Depending on sex work, I don't know. I can know. Trend, emotional labor, bang, codependent. Ah, that one. Yeah. And do we want the questions, not the video? The comments, yeah. You should just read it out. I think that says the counter argument to what we usually say. And it's this this yeah. whole thing. Fuck it. Okay. Okay, I hope this person doesn't mind, but they had a really good feedback and it yeah, is public. Yeah, it's so the comments, yeah. Okay. They said, in regards to body insecurity issues, I want to share a text I sent to my friend who was considering plastic surgery. The things I say to her are things I constantly have to remind myself of as well, and often have a hard time sticking to, but it's important practice nonetheless. Mm. Us too. Yeah. So here's the quote. For years, I seriously considered getting a nose job because of the bump on my nose. I always compared, and still do sometimes, my nose to other people's noses and got really obsessive and self-conscious about it. I compared my nose to yours too, honestly. Yours? Mine? Ours? No, oh, I the think friend. this was the letter to Oh, the right, right, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, always looked before and, uh, I always looked at before and after pictures on Google of rhinoplasties. My mum actually supported me doing it. She was actually the one that put the idea in my head, which made it worse. She mentioned one day that I could get that fixed if I wanted to. The idea that I could have something fixed reinforced the idea that there was something wrong or not ideal with my appearance to begin with. I know it's hard to accept ourselves as we are, and I love you, and I would never judge you for whatever decision you make, because I know how hard it is not to pick ourselves apart. But I have found something powerful in trying to remind myself to fuck all the shit that's telling me that there's a fix for my flaws. There's a whole money-making empire that feeds off of creative solutions to our problems. These meat suits we live in will one day die and rot away, and what will be remembered and valued for is what we did with our lives. I looked at people like Rosa Luxemburg and Emma Goldman for inspiration. They did not feel fit the ideal of beauty for the time they lived in, but they gave, but they actually subverted those ideas and gave zero shits about how society thought they should look and act. When I get down on myself for my crook nose or my cellulite or my thick legs or my new wrinkles, I try to think about them and how they had no time to waste caring about stuff like that. It's hard, but it's a practice that I feel I like can add more to our lives and confidence than surgery ever will. I love you, dude, and I think everything about you is special and perfect. And I think part of our responsibility to ourselves, to those around us, and to the next generation, is to set a good example for how to love ourselves and keep our focus on what we have, what we want to do with the short time we have on this earth. Oh, that give me shivers. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I was actually just like, BBC just created this incredible documentary on Anna Campbell. Not to say that she's not incredibly beautiful mm. aesthetically as she is, but like, made like a woman just put herself on the front line against fascism and she just didn't care about anything else much though she remains to be beautiful as is and fuck me to be fair that is the aspiration we are stuck and i will say we are stuck in the limbo i will say as again i will say as someone that's trying to fit in in this particular society where i don't have any inheritance where i don't have anything to fall back into i am trying to put myself in this particular society of 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 being pleasantly looking somewhat, I don't know, and so, but the aspiration is being like Anna, so it's being like this person yeah. as well, being like Emma, and um, <laughs> and Emma, um, yeah, th these women have, and more of us should do that, we would just put all of our label towards creating an anti-capitalist, anti-fascist yeah. so society, and, but also, I would, like, I have a lot of issues, um, in general, and also, like, personally with the idea that like to be an anti-capitalist or to be uh, this or this or this anarchist squad or whatever, you have to like look a certain way and you have to conform to a certain aesthetic. And I often feel uncomfortable. Like I in, like I enjoy dressing up in feminine clothes. I enjoy wearing God, lipstick. Yeah, I enjoy all that stuff. Yeah. And then I'll go somewhere like the anarchist festival, a great event full of great people, no doubt. And I will wear my like sexy red top and my red lipstick. And I'll feel like I am seen as not serious or like, why is she here? or she can't possibly have something to add I've because of this. I've been called out for not being crusty enough. Yeah. And like some of this is in my head and some of this is actually reflected in interactions. And so like, it is a constant thing. Like, so on that one hand, I was conforming to society's expectations of beauty, but I was not conforming to my scene's expectations of beauty. So it's like, kind of like, you, you know. You can never win, never win. 
<laughs> the conclusion with this question is you can never win. As in, like, we have full solidarity with the both of the sides of this question, mm. sadly. And, um, like, yeah, I would be lying if I said I didn't want to look hot. Same. I would also be lying if I said that beauty standards were different in different places and you would find that there is the societal beauty standard, but there are also seen specific beauty standards that are also worth taking into consideration. Absolutely. And I would be lying if I said I'm not incredibly jealous for the I'll see women because I guess that's my aspiration. Women that do not care about this. They're mm. just fierce, incredible political um, forces that have made a dent in 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 the sort of st scene that we're in. And they're remembered. They're not remembered by their looks. Actually, come to think of it, no one. No in, one is remembered by their no looks. No one is remembered no, like, by their looks. I remember that amazing actress in 1950 who was super hot. Like, no, <laughs> that never happens, no. right? It, the people that we that are our aspira aspirations, mm. they're only remembered by the work that they've done. But again, we live in a misogynistic society, and we live in a society where, like, yeah, we can have our legacy, but we also have to get by on day to day, not feeling like shit. And if that means I sometimes put on some lipstick or whatever, so fucking be it. Like, yeah, and come to think of it, like the the the, the sort of activist spaces that have been allowed to. Um, I think, or, or the sort of following that I've been able to to amass, really has really come down to I think not only my brilliant thoughts, but sometimes because like I create a certain aesthetic around me that is not that that is not usual for the nerds, and it's not usual for the left. Mm. You know, there's some something in between. And also, like a point we've made in a lot of our previous videos when we're talking about how to date and how to be found attractive is there is a difference between looks as in physical beauty and aesthetic. And aesthetic choices can do so much to like make your looks more appealing for a certain totally. scene or for a certain person or for this or this or this. So like, yeah, you know, we all choose what we wear at the end of the day. We all go to a shop and think I want to wear that and we pick it and we all look at our face and think I'm going to have this haircut or I'm going to have that haircut. Like, yeah, we, we look not. at Angelina Jolie and we go like, she made, she's like the 75 out of 10 scale. And then we go like, Brad Pitt? I don't think I would necessarily be into him that much. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's fine, but it's just so, like... Yeah, it's not, yeah. It's not all that. <laughs> but, okay, so at the end of the day, I worry about your judgment of this particular person in terms of like, you seem to be so um, convinced that they have issues. I wonder what that is on about really because like some people are not necessarily into an aesthetical choice and that's but they would fine. say if they think if that person is like claiming bad hygiene is a revolutionary thing to do but that's what we discussed at the beginning of the yeah. video when i was just like look hygiene is just like babes like kind of like oh oh i cannot believe okay call a, call me out right re reactionary do it i'm prepared for your trolls don't like anyone's thinking just don't. Yeah. Just don't. And you know what? Because I've had to deal with a lot of s bad smells in the way that I was growing up, or also like yeah. not even you don't even have to fall into that space. You kind of find it like gross. And again, a lot of people and um, yeah, if like, you have them are well into it. Again, me, babes, the sort of stuff and the sort of smells I'm into, and I'm in a certain environment is a whole different conversation. Yeah. And also, if you wanna like, you know. Like, fuck it, call me out for being mainstream. Do it. No, but like, if you don't have the means, that is one thing, and I would never ever disrespect someone That's for that. Not, but of course. if someone is making that choice, you know what? Maybe they'll find other people who also don't care about hygiene, and they can both like go off and like exactly. celebrate how like liberated they are from exactly. the like tyranny of the nose. But at the end of the day, I have a nose, and it is affected by you. No, but exactly what you said. It's just like it doesn't mean that that person can't get a partner. They mm. totally can. It seems like you have an issue with them. Yeah, way more than they have an issue and that's fair with enough. themselves. If you don't want to be Fine. in the space with them because they smell, absolutely. I'm, I've made those choices. Yeah, I have made those choices. I have made to made myself exit those spaces where I was like, I can't do this. Yeah, but like that doesn't mean that those people won't find an uh, an incredibly happily ever after yeah. they probably were but if they're saying probably way like, before us <laughs> if they're, but if they're saying like having good hygiene makes you reactionary i call bullshit same all right end of episode of that particular one again <laughs> Sorry. i know it's full of cuts i know i know i know but like no 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 it's, it's all, talking it's about the pool anyways. i don't know <laughs> i think it is something about it. <laughs> so i'm brief like one this minute. is becoming way too many cuts we're very 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 we aware of that do this, we but, don't normally do but, this and i think you can tell 
from the sort of stuff that we already talk on the answers that like we don't really hold anything back yeah like yeah. we're not we're like, ex- exposed as if ever we're gonna, if we we're gonna make a cut we would have already made it like a, a cut to cut i mean like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like it's, it's as open as ever just because you don't want to see me pee in the pool and you don't see mariam's response to that so <laughs> Love well, you, it's more goodbye. worse probably than it is. True. <laughs> Take a speed it up. Okay. Okay, back from the break. Um, what are your tips for someone who does not have a crush on anyone but still wants to date? And what is your opinion on sex used as toxic masculinity? Example: Oh, I get laid away more than you do. I'm a better man. Slash: I get laid more than you. You are a beta loser incel. Well, obviously sad shit but also like not to say that only happens to dudes like i remember i was com- oh, it sounds really sad i was comparing my number to someone um years ago your what number like the number oh your number right, right sorry right. yeah I mean, it wasn't even comparing i was just like and i think that happens between dudes way way more yeah definitely definitely us. the and idea of sex as a scorecard yeah yeah, yeah 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 and it was like this is actually the only person Okay, we've done it. As we've well. done it. Okay, it's two more people. like a curiosity thing for me than a like than a like status to thing. To be fair, the only at, they were also a very very close person. Mm. So like two people that have done this way, just like number number. Mm. Um, and they said theirs. I said mine. And and still, I was like, oh shit, whoa, whoa that's huge. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. So even then, like, so I can completely understand that this is a sort of feeling that one would get not only in like like a dude sort of environment sure i mean yeah there is a pressure to have lots of sex and that's a bullshit pressure because what's more important is they have better sex in my opinion i mean yeah 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 so so i guess in the way um i felt a bit more in my life that i've dated less but i've um cared about the the sort of the amount and the quality more well, you've, had like long, the, you've had a lot of long-term relationships yeah yeah, yeah, yeah sure but like not to say that like the fact that you haven't dated, you still don't care about those particular Mm. issues. So I don't know, like, again, the question is just like, what is your opinion on this particular thing? Like, obviously we think like, toxic masculinity is bad. Like, we talked earlier in this episode about the idea of like, men, predominantly men, treating sex as a kind of like scorecard and like treating it as uh, as a like transaction, unless it's with a sex worker, as very, very problematic. And that if you're going into sex to like up your number, don't have sex. Yeah, but I think a lot of people do. And this is, but has been a huge revelation for me. So to put our cards on the table, um, I didn't really know much about like, I don't know, like for all of our exploration of what like, you know, sex on the left means and all of our like opening and that, we're actually like, we're pretty vanilla. The reason why me and Rowan is doing the show and no one else is because like, even our closest friends, we wouldn't necessarily feel mm. um, like the connection or the openness. Yeah, we men should like, be in a space where we can talk about sex with each other, but that's like also not that common. And like a lot of men I've, I've spoken to, like lefty men, don't talk about it at all or only talk exactly. about it with one female friend. Yeah, or yeah. This and this. Because also they're lefty men that are aware of like, in their scene, it's not cool to be like, high five, bro, I got lead. For a good reason. But therefore that means that they end up not talking about their sexual experiences at exactly. all. So yeah, that's precisely it. It's like, we're doing this, but we don't want you to give a feel that like, we're around this like a particular circle that just like everyone is so like cool and easy to talk about sex all the time. Not at all. Not if anything, at all. We're literally kind of the rebellion against this. Yeah. And like people, like close people to us that go like, can't believe you said that or like, can't believe you talked about this. Yeah, people don't talk about sex on the left. But also because sex is seen as like, you know, that's not revolutionary. That's not like... Oh, don't this, even this, this. get on my beef about like, the anti-fascist groups not sharing our stuff. But fine, 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 sure, fine. Also, I just want you to tap into your part where you said like, You've never had a crush, but you do want to date. And I just want to say, like, I don't get crushes very often, but I really enjoy dating. Like, I generally only, I'm like so much better than I am because I only get crushes after I've got to know someone and I'm so like politics and stuff. But like, I would normally start dating someone without having fancy them before. Maybe that makes me like a super bad person. But like, if I only dated when I had a crush on someone, I would be a barren wasteland. Well, I guess I'm quite the opposite as in like, I just... I don't really date that much, but I guess mm. just like I don't want like just because of my like fairly when I see polyamorous it's still fairly monogamous. <laughs> but anyway, it's just like uh and yet I crush on people all and the I'm time. I'm so jealous because I love that feeling of having a crush and like it's so fun, like looking forward to them like 
being around oh, you. Oh, the dance, and, like, like the paradise birds, yeah. the dance. And you're like, you want to kind of be flying, but you don't want to be too much. Like, I, the one time I've ever had a crush, I enjoyed that so much. I know, the, the exquisite pain is that. Yeah. It's rewarding sometimes, but um, I don't know. I just, I still, I would, I would. I think it used to be more fun back in the day now. It's just like, oh, this is going to be my life. For yeah. the rest. Like, this is at least six months of torment. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, basically, what I'm trying, I guess what we're trying to uh, say to you is that like, these sort of scoring exercises or people really... Um, okay, base, I guess the left is full of people that are trying to <laughs> come with people as well. And so we're not trying to say that the left is somehow above this or we're not or no. or they yeah. don't talk about sex but sex is present in every fucking conversation yeah and even like, if even if though we're we're we seeming to be in a comfortable environment to talk about this we get called out about being this open about this all the time so although very very correctly you're assigning this to like a bro culture which is a thing um do not underestimate just how much um the radical leftists still do not really understand just how much uh, how much of a difference it is for like a woman to go on a hookup and like the shame walk and mm -hmm. how it is for a dude so we thank you so much for like acknowledging this and one thing if we could one do one thing with our project if we could get i can't believe this that this is like because i was yeah um if we can get one for the dudes that do go on to uh, one night stands when they feel insecure themselves to be caring of the woman, woman like that that would be that would be really huge yeah yeah you can want to have a one night stand and even like get a score on your notch or whatever the fuck it is and still not treat the person you're sleeping with like shit I'm it's still so also easy a not huge to treat believer them like shit. that like uh first time around is never that good like yeah, sure literally. sure it can be visceral sure it can be like you know really quick and like i don't know somehow utilizing the spaces around you all of that stuff but like i mean again that happens yeah i would like someone who has lots of hookups but never has a long-term relationship is less likely i would think to end up having very very good sex than someone yeah. who is with a partner and learns what they like and what they like and oh my yeah. god we're both just coming all the time like yeah 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 i will say something to be said about i think there's a certain Mm, I would like to say a certain uh, trend as of late, hopefully, because there is a bit more feminist porn out there, even on, on the mainstream sites, even like to do with, fuck it, I talked about squirting it up on this mm. channel, but like even to use your fingers on someone, mm. to use your hands, to use, to use certain particular, even very graphic ways to please yeah, a woman. It's not all about the dick. like. I think it used to be way more now. Yeah. I think it's a bit. There is a certain space now of opening up. But like in my sexual fantasies, <laughs> like, like the the penis is only a very small part of them. The ones I have, like the specific, like I have, I have three, and like the the penis is like mm, it's involved, but it's not the main not not the main act. Like yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And it's also like the whole notch on your bedpost thing. The whole idea of like rating and like I've had more sex than you, therefore you're a beater or whatever. Like. What does sex mean to you? Like when we were doing a scoring, I was very confused. Like, the threesomes count. Like, sleeping with a woman is a very different thing from sleeping with a man. Like, there's a Did lot of like. Did they make them come? We fake all the time, by the way. It's a thing. You are not a stud if this woman has gone ah 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 literally. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, so many. And this is sad. This is bad. This is toxic. This is masculinity. This is misogyny. We shouldn't be doing this. And we're as as guilty of doing that but the reason we're doing that is because there's a pre pressure when you're having just like penis centric sex of like he's doing this thing he's like are you enjoying it are you enjoying it are you enjoying it and you're like yeah i'm enjoying it yeah 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 like yeah, yeah, yeah. it becomes like again like the transactional idea like because also i've been in situations before in my past where like i wanted the sex to stop just because i'm like okay this has been really good but i'm like kind of tired now and they expect me to come because they want to feel like they're a good lover right and it ends up with a situation where you're like faking pleasure to make them not feel inadequate which is again very yeah. weird like because i can like really enjoy sex without having an orgasm yeah absolutely. so it's like yeah yeah i know i feel yeah, really so from the question no, but no no but the score basically the scoring the score is not how many people you've inserted your bits into sadly that seems to be the yeah. germany yeah. <laughs> but um 
the score is like how many people you've made blind come mm. right and um, um, I think people that you have actually made to feel that way you're more likely to want to repeat it again come to think of it this is fascinating like come to think of like I don't know whatever the one I stands I've been in if I have even um, people that I have faked it with and actually they got me to that place they're more likely to like want to be with me again yeah. than the people that are like um, I've performed a certain duty but I guess such. the whole problem is with the toxic masculinity thing is that they don't care about wanting to do it again with the same person right the whole point is no but like I think there's a certain um, performativity well, no. I think there's a certain reward of them knowing that they've actually delivered yeah that's true yeah and they would oh, rather be come with so me. Hard, man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, but and they would rather be with someone that they did. I mean, I would like to think that most people, at least submitting questions to us, like seeing your partner ecstatic is like a killer part of sex. It's like one of the main parts of sex. It's like seeing your partner like fall to pieces. That's like awesome. And and yeah, the people that are probably saying these sentences that you've outlined in that question are not um, not those people they're not those people I don't think if they've seen anyone actually fall to pieces no. you know what I mean no if it's about the numbers not like if, you know what uh, like say like like with everything it's about quality not quantity like and also someone in a long term relationship is probably having more sex than someone who's like casually dating because you have sex like you have to go out hunting for every time you can, but like, then again we live in such a like bubble of an existence because like from the little bit of the mainstream that I have witnessed thus far, um, it seems to me like it's 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 savage out there. Mm. <laughs> it's really dark. It's like uh, people, especially like coworkers, they get together. Then like the dude usually feels like they're above someone else if they fuck them and left them already. If it's like city boys, that sort of mm-hmm, shit, it's mm-hmm. like it's dark as fuck. It's really, really bad out there. It's really hard, to, like I think, particularly as a dude, to like ignore those signs and symbols that say that like numbers matter or whatever. But like, orgasms matter. Orgasms matter, and also not just orgasm, but like having a satisfied partner. Like, and if you are that guy that like literally goes around like giving stupid, if you are NHS National Health <laughs> Service, <laughs> that just goes around now like giving mad orgasms to everyone. Like, I encourage you. Yeah. Yeah, man, if you're giving head all the time, like, call me. <laughs> <laughs> but good, good fingering does a lot as well, or, yeah. Um, and also, I don't think we've ever said this before. Have lube. Just have lube. Have lube. Just have lube. Like, don't be like, I don't need it, man, because she's so wet. You know what? She's probably, like, frantically spitting on her fingers and rubbing it when you're not looking. Like, and also, even squirting, it's just, it's like, it's pretty watery. It's like, yeah. it's not... It no, it's like it. shower sex and, like, exactly. fast sex. Like, water does not count as lube. No! It's like rubbing. Like, and there's one, again, one thing that we can get through our eighth episodes of yeah. things. Like, water is not lube. Water is not lube. Have lube. It's weird if you don't, like... Just have some, yeah. Serious, yeah. Yeah. Like, one way to get to understand whether someone is a player or not is, like, whether they have loop <laughs> or if they don't, it's like... Yeah. And, like, also, like, by the way, what, how, like, how wet someone is is not necessarily a, like, test of how, like, aroused they are because, like, different people produce different levels of liquid and such like that. Absolutely. So, like, you can be, like, as turned on as fuck and not be wet and that's also valid and just give it some fucking And this also really depends on the cycle as well that you're mm-hmm. in. So, yeah. this is... Totally, like, no, it depends on the cy- cycle. cycle. It depends on like, uh, like whether you've been hungover and stuff like that. Like, totally. Yeah. It's oh like, my god. It's a super thing. Like, just have lube and you won't go wrong. <laughs> well, unless you really are terrible. Yeah, unless you're like a terrible. Case, like, you can learn. One can learn. Yeah. yeah. Well, we all learned. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's only one place. So yeah, I mean, I don't know if we've helped. I mean, your question was quite yeah, but we've also talked about the. The idea of making women not feel used after sex in like earlier episodes of the same show, so check them out as well. Um, yeah, yeah, and the whole idea of like scoring and just like you know, I don't know, dating and um, not having a crush. Um, good on you. Yeah, like you're lucky. Most I don't know. I feel like I, yeah, as I say, like I have a crush, but I don't date. <laughs> yeah, and it's fine to date and not have crushes. Like dating is fun. Like getting to know someone is fun. You don't have to like. But be nice when you tell them the next day that you're not into them. Yes, that's the main thing. Just treat people with respect and oh consideration. Oh my god, I cannot believe that a basic dog like this still 
requires such like a no but it's, it shows that we are in a bubble and even in our bubble like men treat women like shit yeah, so, yeah, you yeah. Know, don't like, think that we're in a good bubble no we're not like <laughs> oh our place is so much better than your no. place no <laughs> Our place no. is just as fucked up as the mainstream, oh, just with like slightly man. different rules. Yeah, and or like they give better excuses. They mm. just don't like blank it completely. No, they, they use the buzzwords. Like, they use the buzzwords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, if you want feedback or you have more questions, please do let us know. Yeah. I think we're gonna call this episode a day. Yeah. 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 I think so. What's the next one, anyways? Uh Oh, we cannot have one disky left. <laughs> wow, another Guinness left. Oh, basically, I feel a bit more back in the rhythm. I'm just like, slightly chilly, so I'd want to do another oh, um, okay. another kettle. I'm so, 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 so sorry this is full of We like, thought this was actually a fun idea. I'm not to say. It's, it's that meant practical. to be like m- beginning of July. Yeah. We thought like pool. We thought like it's just going to be warm and lovely. It's like 20, 19 degrees yeah, out of there. So we're having to do really <laughs> pathetic like kettle into the pool sort of action, which no one wants to see. Oh yeah, this is the nice guy one. That would be quite a good one oh, to do. That'd be nice. Okay. And this is the last one. In terms How about of we just put the, put the tap in for the rest of it, the hot tap, just continually going for the rest of okay. it. Okay. We just want you to really understand that we don't make cuts just because it's no. whatever. It's just like, okay, we've got. I'm, some I'm gonna put things. it out there on the cu- like. I'm gonna no, put my another. Cu- I get the status. Oh. Okay. <laughs> 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 That's not what I thought I you were gonna say. Gonna... Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I mean. Yeah. We, we need the water to be warm, basically. No, basically, I get the status. And if it's cold water, I get issues. Sue me. Also, bear that in mind, if you date, like, a uh, mm. cis woman or a person with a vagina, it's a thing. It happens. Yeah. You see so bas- happen. There, there's been, basically, yeah. I'm not to say that in ever got to ever, go. it's just like, I don't even want to get to that place. Um, oh, <gasps> shit. No, 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 it happened to me in the past. It happened to me in the past, it's fine. Okay, you keep talking to them, I'm gonna turn on the hot tap and um, put them in. Right, so I won't necessarily talk about, like, I guess, a particular question, because we'll get to that. Rowan is now turning on the tap, hopefully a bit of a oh, kettle yeah. thing as well. Sunny there. I don't know, I just want to kind of talk a little bit about what this project meant. To me personally, I um, have been extremely lucky to have Rowan join me in this because I don't really. Um, imagine any other person to do this uh, with I felt I don't know I felt like really there have been points where I was really calling it quits and deleting the whole channel because like trying to get a job with having like being a trade unionist and having like a sexual relationship show is difficult I think I'm hoping that there have been quite a few awesome people around that have been supportive of this and I thank you a lot um, I know not many people want to give a shout out to this because it is kind of scary and weird. Like, why would you give a shout out to um, that sort of show? And yet it means everything. I don't know how to explain this. It's like, we don't have that much other stuff going on. We don't really have our inheritance coming our way. We're kind of fucked and it's embarrassing to admit. And yet we we hope that you understand. We hope that we can give a certain help. We also understand that, of course, we don't cover everything all the time. And yet, and yet, I think you would understand just how less of an empathy a lot of leftist projects put out there. And so, um, yeah, and today the setup is just like, you know, oh. like, It's getting warmer. I think it, it was maybe going through. Yeah, I think it was, it was still in the <laughs> tubes. <laughs> but I think you just, yeah, I think you need to understand that there's like no breath to left to glory in any of this. It's just two girls that are really worried for a lot of their like cis traits, male friends um, that are awesome. And we'd like to think we'd give a bit of an advice. Yeah. Oh, and it was hot at the time. Hmm. Oh wait, maybe it's getting warmer. Or maybe I I'm just getting colder. Oh, maybe it is getting. I think it's yeah. It's, it's getting still. warmer. Oh, there it there it is. It's getting warmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I put it here so we could get the direct to us. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, it's so definitely getting warmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's more water in it. 
Yay. <laughs> We're getting back. I'm going to pee again in five minutes because of that. But it's yeah, that's the thing. It's like, the... like wipe this off of my tip. <laughs> <laughs> I no, a cigarette. You know how it is. It's funny that like we've done, in a way, fuck it. You see us relax. I don't know, but like we've done these like shows where we were like in an enclosed space and was all like the worrying. Then we've done some live shows, and in a way, live shows like they inspire a certain amount of like um, I guess discipline and or I don't know, just a certain feel of structure, which definitely probably that's what you prefer. But like, if you ever, 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 if you're a long-term watcher, which would be amazing, mm. if you ever thought like, what about these girls in their own fucking environment, like, then you can take <laughs> with the step now. Uh, which is, yeah, How do they I'm live? fucked. They live in a pool. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty fucked. That's, that's what's happening. I think you're the it's famous okay. one. Just because... I mean, you have no money, but you have a lot of credit. No, wrong, but like, I would like to think I've actually like done a lot of like actual content creation yeah, towards yeah. them. No, no, no. I'm not saying you're famous for nothing. Like, you, like, Mariam, like, if you haven't checked out all of her other stuff, like, Left Left Up, her multiple guest lectures at, like, universities and her two award nominations <laughs> that she's had in the last six months, like, this, like, she is doing all of this fucking, like, Well, this is gonna stop now after this. And because she cares about the political project that she's doing, and she's also, like, tried to help me become a person that is known in this world, and I haven't done very well at it because I'm not very good at social well, media. Well, that's effortless, because you're an absolute fucking legend. No, by the way, if you haven't... promoted me every step of the way since I moved to London six months ago. She has done all she can to make me feel included. It's effortless. You're a huge fucking incredible personality that more people should know about. And if you could... Checked on Alice, <laughs> you would be making yourself a more educated, more funny person. What they, what those two people have done, like again with no budget, just being too incredibly funny, self-critical, in creative, like non, like self-obsessed people, is incredible. Honestly, to this day, hands down. Although my family is Muslim, like, and I d just did just cost myself that's why. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am like um, best political comedy I've ever heard. So basically, we both do cool easily, stuff. Easily, easily, easily. We get no money for it. <laughs> so hence, we get drunk on camera yeah. in bikinis. <laughs> on. We spend what we buy one pound beers and have fun. Yeah, and if you can't deal with that, then like fucking do. Which has been really fascinating. So like lip com, love you lip com. And yeah, the few dudes out there, they're just go. Ah, oh, this is not political budget. It's just look at these fucking girls. It's just like pals. Pals. Yeah. It's Don't even know of fucking politics. Though. Like, because we have so much feedback from people that really respect our show, and then the, like, the left that we know are very highly critical. Totes, like, yeah. And in this very, like, feminism is a bourgeois deviation kind of way. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, because because we're to a woman, it's middle class, like, mm, so that's yeah, great. Yeah, we're inherently middle class mm. by being female. Yay. That's cool. And because we talk about feelings, we're, like, middle class, so yeah. that's a thing. Yeah, which means a class struggle. Oh. Because we never, ever talk about class, not when we're talking about social reproduction, or like emotional labor, I or like gender dynamics. We, we talk about class more class, than <laughs> most anti-fascist projects, so that's funny. So that's cool. Well yeah. done. So, shall we do the next question? Yeah, let's do the last one. Quickly, quickly, quickly. quickly. Oh, oh, you're attached. That's me. Hey! <laughs> we all continually do this. Oh, I'm not no. even attached. I don't think. Oh, okay. Wait, so could, could you could you just look that oh, it's, yeah. it's 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 it's. What am I looking for? It, like it's just running. It's running. It's running. You're in the picture, it has a red circle. Fabulous, okay. we're on, we're good. Cool. This is great, this is how you. <laughs> this is how the show becomes. That's the thing, it's like we're already showing it to people oh. how it's, this Ooh. is gonna be Ooh. if we're like, if, if this pops up, which is yep. this. It's gonna be us in a pool. It's never gonna get, be better, honestly. With a hot water tap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one. Last one. And actually, oh, no. what about the, we should do it. We'll do it at the end. Okay. If we Quickly. have the, if we have the energy. Yeah. I'm so sorry for the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's your turn to read. So here you go. Wait, there you go. Hello. I have only just discovered show, your show. And was wondering if you have discussed the phenomenon of the nice guy anywhere. I do accept the logic of the alt-right insult movements with regards to being a nice guy. However, I have consistently been told that I'm too nice throughout my life, 
by friends and family, mostly men, but some women too. And if anything, it seems more prevalent uh, among LGBTQI friends. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what people really mean by this. I don't want to be less nice. But I had any form of relationship in over five years. Wait, sorry, say that again. I'm not entirely sure what people really mean by this. I don't want to be less nice. Mm -hmm. But I haven't had any form of relationship in over five years. So what's a bit annoying is that like I don't really understand whether um, this person is straight bi or gay or whether that matters. I'm guessing either bi or very queer friendly. Yeah. And a man. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, can, well, I think we're... I, I think mean, said nice some, guy, so yeah. I'm... Yeah, guy. Okay, yeah. so... I actually find it very, very interesting because, okay, on the one hand, nice guy is used by a lot of shit men as a way of being like, I told her she was pretty and she won't sleep with me. I'm a nice guy. Bullshit. However, nice guy is also a category that unfortunately a lot of women put men into when he's not seen as, and this is a mainstream view, but seen as like sexually dominant, seen as taking charge, seen as being like, let me pin you against this wall and make love to you. Like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Just that. Don't do that without consent. <laughs> There's but always like, consent. So like the nice guy thing is is a double edged sword, unfortunately. Yes. Like we're not talking ideals now, we're talking real society and this might make things reactionary, but this is the thing. Like, yes. I wonder if what you mean by nice guy means being someone that's not assertive. And I think um uh, yeah. A lot of the time, uh, the the trope of being or like the act of being assertive, although we we pin it to the man, it kind of falls down onto women. The, the conversation that we had about children, right? The the thing mm. is just like um, asserting your actual desires, like th- th- that. But it's just like um, the dude rarely of the time they they plan like um, when to meet the, the the school teachers when they, they book the medical appointment when they make sure the kid has like the after school classes when they make sure that they start eating this particular food and not that particular food like it's always basically the basic for the woman is always to be assertive and plan the next thing and do the, but do the, the actual basic stuff but there's like sexual assertiveness which is and then there's like actual real life assertiveness is making sure we have food and vegetables making sure this stuff is done and that's very woman centric yeah it's right? very the types of assertiveness are very gendered that's true yeah. that's interesting yeah, yeah so i just i i wonder if like the the people that i told you that you're too nice just kind of mean that you haven't necessarily uh put any sort of opinion about anything of course you have or also, that uh, you've given into gender stereotypes and you're the guy that does the washing up you're the guy that does the cooking you're the guy that does the social reproduction the the feminized tasks could then be seen as being a nice guy right really? Cause Cause like, have you ever really met anyone that go that really really does all those things and still is not someone that people would be interested in i have never met that guy i have met people that like are too nice because they don't really say anything deviating they don't really stick up for their friends in terms of a conflict like they sit on the fence they're kind of nice and they're trying to like put a bring mm. everyone across but do they do the practical tasks do they really do the cooking do they really like do the practical things i don't think they that's do. true because there is the phenomenon yeah that we have come across and we really fucking hate of the fence sitter, of the everyone's darling, Don't. of the person that in a conflict will not take a side because they can see all sides of the story. You know what? Sometimes there isn't all sides of the story and sometimes you need to lose some friends in order to have some fucking principles. And exactly. if you're that person, you're not a nice guy, you're an unprincipled wet blanket. Yeah, but maybe that's not you. Hopefully. Because I'm also thinking of, for example, someone who could be read as a nice guy is someone that I was dating in, say, November. Mm. Yeah, but have but that was the... But that's not that person. But that that's not an cri- everyone's darling. That's a socially awkward, uncomfortable, doesn't quite know how to be assertive, doesn't necessarily want to be assertive. Because, like, I think there's a... I do think... Okay. I do think there is a crisis in feminism for men. For reals. This which, is why we're doing what we're doing. Which is, like, on the one hand, I want to be, like, oh understanding God, of women's really needs. I want go, to be, like... Go. I want to be like, make sure I'm not, not too dominant, don't make too sure yes. space, make sure I take on a social yes. reproductive task of washing up or whatever that is, make sure I listen to the women and this and this. And then on the other hand, there's the like, the kind of guys that get laid are the ones that are assertive, the ones that have a motorbike, the ones that, that like take up space and are like their like most peacocky selves. And I do think there's this like, this contradiction in feminism between what we say we want and what is actually seen as desirable. 
I think I have found like a, in a way, in a way not agreeing with you. It's just like I found that there are two binaries. There's either the guy that um, does all the dishes, does all the practical tasks, will be there for like supporting pe like people in, in practical sense, but will stand, but will stick on the line in terms of like any sort of disagreement with anyone else. Mm. And then there will be a guy that will like, you know, will be like, probably will have their own friendship group and probably be really militant and be like, you're, you know, you should behave this way or like your friends are shit in that way. And yeah, they'll be a bit like, they, they will expect you to be the woman in any every other way because mm. that's their way of dominating. So, so a nice guy, I mean, I don't know. Do you feel yourself as being a nice guy? It says his friends and family mostly men, but some women too, and mostly LGBTQ people, say that he's too nice. Like, I've what does that mean? I've never met this person. Too, too, too nice is a nice way of saying too acquiescent, too giving in. Exactly. Too not holding your exactly. own. Exactly. Like, yeah, 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 like yeah. there is a way of being a nice person and having confidence and con conviction. Conviction, that's the word. Yeah. Oh, my days, yes. So, like, you, like, if you're seen as too nice, maybe think about, like, have you ever actually taken a stand on something? Exactly. Have you actually ever, like, like physically put yourself in support of a person exactly. or a movement or a conflict exactly. or this? Like, because to me, it's something that's really fucking sexy is someone who is standing up for their friends or for their point of view, even if it might face the idea that other people might not like them at the end. Because if you're going to take a stand on something, some people are not going to like you. And are you, are you prepared for somebody who's not like you? Because if you are, exactly. then other people will like you so much more. And I don't know, maybe that's somewhat personal, but like I will say someone that we know that somewhat uh, perhaps would have thought like, like nice guy of such in certain ways but like it came to like them a certain dominance and then like they did when we were doing it already so not to say like that's a masculine thing but they like two times um, oh yeah. yeah and i was like that babes i get yeah. it that's amazing but yeah if you're seen as a nice guy i don't think that is actually a compliment i, and I don't think that is actually something you should hold as a badge of pride no yeah. I also think it's okay for us to blur certain things out. Like, I I had an alterca altercation with Boris Johnson that I could happily sell for many things, but I wouldn't won't because that puts my people that I love into bad place and in terms of safety. So on the other hand, that. I own Jacob Rees Mogg and I'm super proud of it. <laughs> oh my god! If we have that, we're definitely going to get to that. <laughs> Rowan. <laughs> Oh, and Jacob Rees Mark. It's such a babe. <laughs> oh man, this girl. Yeah, just a babe. Just like you know, we're not all babes, but some people are babes. They're just. I've done bad stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice guy. Thank you. Good, probably a good ally in many shapes or forms. Not to say that we haven't. Uh, witnessed people that call themselves that and hence that completely subtracts them of being yeah. like yeah you're not liable you're like I don't trust a nice guy I'm sorry have you like, ever heard of a nice girl by the way you've no, never heard no of nice that. girls don't exist never no. they don't exist no because women are expected to we're do either those boring things. or bitches yeah boring or bitches boring or bitches mm -hmm. nice girl is a boring girl bitch is not a nice guy no so yeah, that's the other thing. It's a very gendered term. It's, and it's such a gendered term. It's very interesting term. actually that he gets this mostly from his LGBTQ comrades. Like, is this the guys who should have better problems? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like curious about that. Like, what do they mean when you, you say you never ask them? Like, I think you might actually need to ask them what they mean when they say nice guy because. And also the fact that you haven't had a relationship in five years. Oh yeah, that was part of the question, like, right? I don't think that's down to you being nice. No, <laughs> you are not not getting laid because you're a nice guy. I'm sorry, no. like th that plays into the whole idea of like women only date bad boys, oh. and like oh, fuck that noise. No. Like it's just not true. It's just not true. You either like, have a good Tinder profile. <laughs> you either have a good Tinder profile for three hundred pounds, or. <laughs> Or like, you know what, yeah, I'm into a guy that has convictions that I agree with and will stand up for his friends and comrades and will also be prepared to be the not nice guy. Personally, I am not into the nice guy that's everyone's best friend because he is a person who is not standing up for anyone. And it's not a double stereotype because us as ladies have done it as well. As in like, I think me and Rowan- We've been really unlikable. 
Exactly. In the like London and Anko squatting milieu, I think we are known as like the really like opinionated little bitches. Fine, yeah. Deal with it. Yeah, we're not the nice guy and I don't want to be the nice the, guy. I don't want to be the nice guy. If that means staying silent when my friends are getting like shit treatment, yeah. like fuck being the nice guy. Yeah, fuck. And honestly, I think you and me mostly have one. Oh, good one. <laughs> so was that helpful? Yeah. I think it was. I think it was. I like, think it was. Yeah, ask, look, think about what it means when they say you're a nice guy. Ask your friends what it means when they say you're a nice guy. Think about whether being a nice guy actually means that you haven't stuck up for anyone, actually means that you've been really careful to be everyone's friends, actually means that you haven't had conviction. Maybe it doesn't mean anything that we're going up the wrong ladder. Fine. But we're also, projecting, we're always yeah, projecting. Yeah, we're always projecting. But also, like, having a relationship, with, not having a relationship for five years, that's fine too. Like I know lots of people that have not done that and then had meaningful good relationships because they waited for someone who they actually have a good connection with. Like, or they stay the relationships that are fucking miserable. The relationships yeah. are overrated. And like, the, like this is another version of the scoring thing. I've had all the other things. Like, it is not about how many people you date. It is not about how long your relationships are. It is not about how late you start dating or how late you start having sex with someone of the opposite gender. It's not about any of that. It's about how much you respect and treat with respect and have understanding and love and compassion and sexy times with someone else that is all that matters if we could put our project into a 15 second video this would be what Rowan said literally so done. yeah amazing like fuck the rules like maybe you've been single for five fuck years because you're a nice guy maybe you've been single for five years because nobody sees your own convictions that's up to yeah. you to decide yeah and come back to us with feedback if you yeah have more thoughts I'm feeling in the vibe. All right, so we, we do the so we're doing the pop maybe song. It's the, maybe it's the warm. Maybe it's the warm. Okay, so our last question, and it's kind of a oh complicated. God, but do okay. we have to read the lyrics is the out? It's the thing. Yeah, it's the last one. Because like, to be fair, I already pried you and for us to like going through this. Yeah, we have done it. The pool has been various temperatures. There's been rain. <laughs> there's been peeing. That's, that's <laughs> there's right. been technical difficulties. <laughs> there's been umbrellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm so sorry if this one's like more cut than usual. But really, as you say, there's been all these issues. So we hope that if you're a true fan, <laughs> you'll you get forgive it. us. Yeah. Okay. Um, would you want to read the? Should we? But do we have to read the song out? That's the thing. Look at this point. Okay, we have a question that's about analysis. To be fair, it's international. Song. To be fair, it's international. We should go with that. So, we, but should we read the song out as well as the question? I think we kind of have to if other people are going to get the video. Yeah. Okay. 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 Do so, you want to read the question or read the song? Fabulous. Okay. There's Guinness in the pool. <laughs> okay. Let's get my this. ovaries drunk. I want to ask you for your opinion about some song lyrics in a Korean song I like that I think can be discussed through a feminist lens. There are a few lines in the song that portray the boyfriend as hurt and vulnerable and the singer as protecting him from his ex and tormentor. I personally admire the attitude being expressed in the song. Uh, how can we aspire towards these feelings and more importantly with reciprocity? How can we encourage both genders to receive and offer support as needed and whatever and whenever available on the basis of solidarity rather than on the basis of gender? Here's the link to the translated song links. You don't uh, have to discuss all of it, <laughs> which is good. We don't have to discuss all of it. Yeah. And then this person sent the link, but I was too fearful of just pressing a random link. So this is why it's delayed. We asked them for a screenshot. The song was first translated from Korean to Spanish and I translated to it again to English. This is the thing that like Yeah, so we're gonna do Korean it. Korean to English, so we just have to do it. Sorry if you're later fine that my translation is not entirely accurate. Thank you so much for bearing with me. Babes, thank you. Yeah. And I'm sorry it took us a while, but it's just like I know I saw I was like I saw a link and the thing is that I press it and then for five seconds nothing happens, just like yeah. virus Because so you know, we why. are not exactly like I mean we are potentially a target. We've already had like problematic comments in our videos and stuff Apparently, like yeah, yeah 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 so we are a little bit wary about um unsolicited links <laughs> but now we have the lyrics can i have a few pops off of that do you want to roll you one do you want to roll you one i can roll you one this is a very dependent relationship have that <laughs> have that i'm gonna roll while i read okay well you can you can wait are you telling me now that you're in a pool you can read and roll at the same time. Can you take the hose away from me? It's burning my leg. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's just so, a woman of many powers. Warning by Tashani. Okay. 
This, is, this is translated twice. It's not going to rhyme. It's going to be. It's going to be like a weird spoken word by Rowan situation happening. And I'm sorry if I don't put any intonation You're into it. You're a fucking legend, babes. Okay. Did you really not know we were dating? I thought you were done with him. Why are you bothering him again? <laughs> Do you want to take him from me? Now you want him back? I know you left him, and you were very calm. When he felt lost because of you, I was the one who consoled him. Think of his heart after how you broken it. Oh, how, on how difficult that must have been. Now he's out of your shadow, and he's opened his heart to me. You must not do this. Don't come near him. You don't deserve his love. You only come around when you need something. I will not forgive that. I know you left him, and you were very calm. When he felt lost because of you, I was the one who consoled him. Come back to me like the way things were before. How can you say that so easily? The wounds you inflicted on his heart has barely started to disappear. You must not do this. Don't come near him. You don't deserve his love. You only come around when you need something. I will not forgive that. Don't search for him anymore. Don't come near him. Now I'm the one at his side. Don't interfere with our love. Now he needs me. Amazing. So when I say amazing, I go like a very different turn of events from what you would. So can I just say I fundamentally disagree with the analysis given by the questioner. I think this dynamic portrayed in this song is incredibly problematic. It's taking ownership over a person. It's like treating them like they have no agency. It's building up the dynamic of like, I am this great savior and she is a terrible bitch. It's like, I, I find it very worrying how much control the singer is having over this person's life. They are saying on his behalf, don't come near him. Now he's got me. Is to me, that's toxic as fuck. Or, or a man? I'm assuming the singer is female because he, he talks about it through a feminist lens, like the, the questioner. I wonder. But yeah, I've got to say, like, I read this song and I thought, like, this is a highly one, like, pick me and also like, yeah, like controlling way of looking at the agency of your partner. So that's my initial analysis. So um, the re oh. bad with that. How did you how did Rowan is a superwoman today. Honestly, like I couldn't, I couldn't get it going. I'm a, I'm a chain smoker. <laughs> I'm trying to quit. I was quitting really well until our last, our first live video. That was the break of my six days straight of smoking, <laughs> and then I chain smoked for like two hours. <laughs> um, I think there's a very specific dynamic to this video or to this. To the song as such because i haven't seen the video yeah no i haven't actually okay. also seen the video it's because it it does come from a um a south korean perspective and um that's basically what we're gonna say is that like we received this question quite a few weeks ago probably before even our live shows and we're really thinking should we cover this or not it's not really in our remit what's going on like should yeah, we? like if you want to come up with, with like more cultural analysis question, that's not really what we do. Exactly. Just to like put that out there. Yeah, we don't want to just make people think that we're into this. Thing. Yeah, but we can do this one because he's like, take, well, they've taken the time to translate it and submit yeah, yeah, it yeah. twice. So we are yeah, doing yeah, yeah. it. We're doing it. And yet, um, the reason why it's giving us so much like animation in a certain not animation, animosity in a certain sense is because like of the incredible brave and really um materially costing to people um movement that has been happening in uh, south korea so when we think of the me too movement right we think about a year and a half we think of the, like the pink hats we think of america we think of harvey weinstein done to a lot of places that is coming way way slower it's coming way way later i can think of lithuania as well it's just like is there a, is there a movement in lithuania of kind there have been a few call outs only uh, one person i think two people in a certain arts academy got fired okay but that's Anyways. cool yeah, yeah yeah but um still um it's it's a very slow process again like this whole thing is like me too oh my days so many people like had their lives lost mm. like absolutely true, right and so what's been happening in south korea which is fascinating is that like um so there are quite, there are like three different issues, right? So um, uh, some K-pop singers have been found to be um, um, to have fuck me, like yeah, raped someone, and 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 um, 
and the videos of that have been circulated around their friends. The videos over the rates. Yeah, yeah. And the messages are all, all of that around that stuff. They're all in the WhatsApp group and, and that's been and they're now they're now in court. Mm. They're ma- but like again. So it went somewhere though. Like it wasn't just hush. They're tush. national treasures. They're yeah, of ha- course. it won't they're go probably, any, yeah. it won't go anywhere. But like that happened there and like those are the the biggest ones and so um, in that context that matters and so the the spaces where that was happening was this like the sort of shortage of of, of London was this particular space in, in the capital of South Korea and um, and they found out that actually beyond these particular pop stars there was like mass rape of like just kind of like influencers and sex workers and like girls that happen to be in those particular clubs that were completely getting yeah, sexually assaulted ass- en masse. assaulted and raped en masse in these particular clubs where like I don't know South Korea is an extremely affluent um, country with a lot of capital in it and and I cannot even explain the sort of uh, um, gender I um, segregation that happens there but I think that will arrive in my third point <laughs> where uh, smiles not smiles but yeah it's really really dark and so so yeah happened with the cape pop star then happened to this particular neighborhood and hopefully quite a few po- those people influential people are going to court and then um, eventually which I think was only kind of found out about like six or seven months ago is the fact that there's like a mass surveillance and mass filming of women in toilets in mm, South Korea. Yeah. Basically. It's like normalized. I cannot even. Like, like oh, it's not necessarily normalized, but basically there's like a huge porn industry, specifically, yeah. in, specifically in South Korea or like in the region where women are, um, anyone just like cafes, bars, pubs, well, pubs, uh, I don't think they necessarily exist. filmed. Are filmed in their in the toilet in in that particular scenario and and uh, and that was distributed widely. I mean, not to say that it only happens there. Of course, it's probably a sort yeah, of thing everywhere. that happens everywhere. But all it the was time. like it was a mass thing. There, it was a mass thing, and it went all over the mainstream. And so, so the reason why we're taking this particular song in the particular cultural environment of that region is because. In the past year and a half, there seems to be there seems to be a connection between those three, especially like this person giving like song lyrics, right? So what we're we gonna say? What we're we gonna say? We're gonna say that there is just like a lack of understanding of like one's um, gender strength. There's one. There's a complete misunderstanding of like uh, a certain um, a certain. No one wants to be heartbroken. No one wants to be abandoned. No one wants to be rejected. No one wants to be the person that just completely uses the other person. It's just that in certain aspects of community, not to say that like the London yeah, left no, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. is in any shape or form free of that. Of course it is. It's just that we have to also tie in um, a certain especially recent and contemporary understanding yeah. as to where this comes from. Well, that's why it's interesting, right? Because, like, the main question that the um, the questioner has is about the, the, the man portrayed in this and how his vulnerability is, like, taken seriously and how, I guess, in, a, like, a hypersexualized scenario where a lot of women's autonomy and vulnerability is exploited, the idea that in this particular song a man is taken as the vulnerable one that he's protecting is, like, maybe a subversion of that. Like, I don't agree with the analysis because of the points I made earlier, but it is interesting that coming out of this milieu, that is, that is a narrative that's, like, kind of being allowed to be discussed, the idea of the male's vulnerability and maybe lack of autonomy and need for protection. Yes. I mean, we're really, sh- we're really not in the business of, like, I'm picking every fucking mm. stupid pop song, because if I did, then, like, Backstreet Boys and, like... I would just Mate, say give that me Taylor Swift. <laughs> I would just say that every white dude is amazing, and Taylor Swift, every white woman is amazing. <laughs> I was gonna say like appropriating and terrible, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like because we're Western for sure, we understand that for real. And like culture is important, and but it's just that we're not we're not really doing a culture show. Like culture is totally important, and like there would be a valid YouTube channel if you want to do it of like analyzing pop culture. And we always said AAA should and our getting on should be 
you know, it's an umbrella organization for hopefully all the other radical scenes in their own context. Yeah, if you want to do AAA culture analysis wing in South Korea, that'd be, be our guest. Wicked. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like there are interesting points about like the idea of the male being vulnerable in a scenario. But the overriding point for me of the song were that it was again about dominance and control and a non-healthy relationship and dynamic. Also projection. And like, also projection. We project all yeah. the time. The ex is the baddie, I'm the goodie, Precisely. I'm the savior. Do you think savior. we don't project in between our relationships or towards hmm. the other person? Of course we do. That's like freaking natural. Of course we yeah. do that. It's just like there's a certain amount of re- reflection as to like their state of being, their 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 relationship with their parents, their, mm-hmm. their class, all of these Everything we have things. that we, we try to bring in. Yeah. I really think we do. And like, Again, every situation is 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 different and individual, and um, something that we really hope. And that's our frustration a little bit with this project. That's like a lot of the time we get these incredible questions, and we're like, "What is what is behind this? What is mm. their um, identity?" Hope- yeah, we have to guess a lot in order to give yeah. constructive answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we hope that friends will do more of in the future if we can create a sort of yeah. environment where people can do that so like it's if anything it's really fucking sad and heartbreaking the fact that you have to like refer to the song for us to give you a particular Mm. opinion towards as to what you should think about certain relationship problems it's like it can be way more but also don't demonize exes because that's like i mean i say like abusive as fuck like in this song it's not clear but the idea of like i'm saving you from this bad person that's like can be read as problematic yeah. for sure so we're hoping that we gave you a certain context yeah. here and and understand that it's just really whatever happens in relationship at the end of the day we also know that is whatever happens in between closed doors yeah. like we never wow that's the thing that's cool man happen. we're ending soon <coughs> all right that was good feedback for you uh i think we can call it a day i was very passionate about (laughs) this question and answer but yeah let's um yeah but i think you understand that it's just like really doesn't boil down to these particular um yeah lyrics it's about the whole milieu in which it's around and it's like kudos to you for doing that research because i didn't no no but uh, i hope that i hope that we don't want you to I hope we can encourage you to not send more of these sort of questions towards <laughs> us because we still feel a certain amount of responsibility in answering them and I don't think we should be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is the end of episode eight <laughs> of Anarcho Um In the pool. With, in the pool. Like it had its own technical difficulties. Again, they all sorry do. for the little bit of the cuts. Of all but, the the, but the filming quality is better than the last few because they're not... So, you know, like, you win some, you lose some. Again, as always, I think it's... I don't know. It's not... Be- oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I don't know. It's just like, it's been a bit of a... Like, I want to really establish the fact that, like, this would... If you, if you really... Um, admire the project that we're doing like you have to love the fuck out of hey. the collection the, 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 yeah. the okay. connection that we both have yeah. and and rowan and me and 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 this couldn't be happening and i know what to say it's also really difficult right sometimes people just like give kudos to i don't know it's just like there's a certain yeah, give go those to like Rowan or me specifically. It's just like this is not how it works. It yeah, works. we're a collective. Yeah, and so only do that or don't do this at all. This only works if yeah. it's us two, and I really yeah. massively appreciate this. I think Rowan does too, and uh, even in these difficult circumstances. But if you want us to be more high production, then give us some money. PayPal. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>